says uh, audio connecting don't know if you can hear me you're recording this <laughs> <laughs> yeah you just, wow are you happy then <laughs> how's it going dude you okay yeah i'm good <laughs> where, where where are you now are you in your workshop uh this is my uh zoom studio Yes. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, I'm also in my, in my Zoom studio, in my podcast studio. Oh yeah. Which I, I I I gave uh, TikTok a tour of my garage yesterday. Okay. How did that go down? Well, there's the office, and then the kitchen, and then the water, and then the workshop, and then the Zoom studio, and basically the office is a. Uh, I don't know. It's a recycled bedroom cabinet. It's a little bit higher than everything with a yeah. window that looks out, right? That's where I plug in my phones and stuff. The kitchen is, a. Uh, it's like from a school where you'd like bring the projector into the room or, or, or TV or something like that. <laughs> One of those things on wheels. Rolling it in. Hey guys, yeah, it's, uh, it's end got of like term. a power bar built into it, Yeah. right? And then it's got like a piece of granite and another big chunk of wood. Right, I added a added a dish rack to it, like a drying rack to it this morning. So, so and you've then, been busy. What what time did you get up this morning? Uh, I've been sleeping in little patches, I guess. I'm sleep, busy sleeping here and sleep. there. I don't sleep. You don't sleep that much. <laughs> Neither did um, you know, Nikolai Tesla. You know, so it worked out all right for him, I think, didn't it? His company is worth billions now. Oh, Musk. <laughs> or Tesla. Yeah, no, Tesla so, didn't work out well for him. His, no. All his ideas got stolen, didn't they? Yeah, um, all of his ideas got stolen. He, unfortunately, he died in poverty. Um, and he also was in love with a pigeon. So a bit of a, bit of a mixed bag. Pigeon there, didn't really. fly off on him, did it? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> it was a homing pigeon. It was on its way home. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know anything about him, really. What do you think you know? of this? Well, it keeps disappearing. Can you see it now? Um, it's like a napkin in a bag or something? No, 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 no. CD? No, no, no. A piece of cheese. Yes! All right. Um, what do you think of this American-style cheese? Um, I prefer not to put it on my sandwich, but... Yeah. Uh, it's sure it's sure easy to throw them on burgers, yeah. right? You just peel them and throw them on the burger, and it melts, right? Quick. Correct. Yeah. So, um, speaking of burgers, um, you recently you had a plan for New Year's Eve to go to the place um, that is, I don't know, is is it very very famous with burgers? New York City. I, I think don't it think is. So. No. Do you think they're a famous burger spot? Is it not? Where's the most famous place in America for burgers? Man, I went to this place in San Diego on New Year's Eve, and I got a like, like I had a burger for New Year's Eve, and I got a sticker from them, and I put it on my motorbike. Yeah. And then I crossed the border, and I was staying at a little restaurant that was in the garage of the grandparents' house. And the like, when I got up, the kitchen people made me a burger, right? And the owner of the restaurant was like, "Which burger was better?" Right, because he has he has a really <laughs> top quality burger, and I was like, well, no, it's not the fair because I had that burger on New Year's Eve. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That was my <clears throat> my dinner on New Year's Eve, and this is like I woke up and had a burger. Right. Yeah. It was a good burger, but. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, pr Odaz. probably Odaz was the name of the place in uh, uh, San Diego. On on any other day, the breakfast burger probably you know would have been up there with the other burger. Had you not had your 
nighttime burger on New Year's Eve because yeah. New Year's Eve is magic. And, you know, all of that atmosphere and magic and excitement will be applied to that burger. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's not a fair contest. It totally wasn't. So, but, um, um, dude, what a great restaurant he had, though. It was good, right? was it? Yeah, and he, he went to the States to train as a chef and then built a restaurant in the garage of his grandparents' house. Okay. Right. Uh, that's good. So so the restaurant is in still in his grandparents' garage? Well, I would assume so. I mean, that was many years okay. ago, but yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So, so, dude, yeah. Charles Simpson, welcome to season two of the Cybernaut Club. All right. All right. This is season two, episode two. Welcome back. Um, so I want to find out all about your, I don't know, where did you go? Your world tour? Your well, I should have tour? brought the t-shirt. I should have worn the t-shirt because I made 20 of them. Yeah. Right? I made 20 shirts that say NY Heart M-E. Yeah, I, yeah we saw them last episode. Yeah. We saw them. Yeah. And yeah. NY Heart so, Me. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I uh, my, my flight got changed, okay. right? Because of, you know, uh, what's going on with Omicron. Yeah. Right? So I flew through Montreal instead of New York. Omnicrom. Um, uh, I went through there and then I talked to customs and the guy was like, oh no, just go over that way. And I went over there and sit there. And then we had a discussion and he was like, I don't like what you're doing. What do you mean? I, I, what, 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 well, what, I, I'd, uh, I booked what, a U-Haul. Yeah. And I brought some tools to make it into a bedroom suite. Mm. And uh, okay, <laughs> he wasn't happy with that. He didn't like it. He didn't like that idea. But like U-Haul, I told them, and they told me I got commercial plates on, so I can park anywhere. Okay, right. But border security, I didn't have a hotel that I was going to. I didn't have an address. Oh, right? Okay, yeah. Okay, so then we pulled up my criminal record, and I have a charge. Right, and <laughs> what for vagrancy he or determine whether it was a summary conviction or an indictable offense. He yeah. is, would assume that it's a summary conviction, and therefore I'm allowed to go. Okay, but because he couldn't um, determine it, and that I was going to go stay in a U-Haul, he <laughs> requested that I withdraw my application. Okay, we were together for about three hours. We were pretty good friends. Um, you know, he, he brought my bag up and we went through my bag. I had like, and I had these like walking sticks that had a whole bunch of beer bottle tops nailed to them. So they rattle <laughs> and it's called a logger phone. Right. So did he think it was like a nail bomb or something? You, you're like, uh, Ted Kaczynski here with these bottle caps. <laughs> no, but, but, um, environment said I couldn't take them across the border cause they weren't, they weren't covered and treated. Okay. Right? But that didn't matter. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So what did and he make so, you do with uh, them? Uh, did you have to put them in a bin? Hey? Did you have to uh, throw them in the trash? Uh, no, we tied them back onto the bag and sent the bag back down after okay. we went through everything, right? And uh, we filled out a form. And like you questioned me and we filled out a form and then I withdrew my application to go to the States. Yeah. And somebody from Air Canada came and got me and walked me to like, arrivals basically and there was my bag sitting on a little lonely uh um conveyor belt with the sticks attached to it <laughs> and i started wheeling that through and somebody's like somebody said that i needed those not treated wood and i was like i, I haven't left the country right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i was in montreal so i went and hopped on uh, i found out how and i hopped on the bus and I went to downtown Montreal. And I put two of the sticks down that didn't have the beer bottle tops on them. And shortly after that, I lost the other one, which was good. I didn't want it anymore. Yeah. It was, it was, a, it was a hassle. And uh, well, I went to like a mall or something like that. I got some eat, something to eat and I went to a mall. And um, somebody came and sat on my table when I left. But it was next to my bag. So I went and like asked her if I could join her. Right. <laughs> and she like, you know, and then I was like, she doesn't understand what I'm saying. And I, and I left. 
where, there was where, no where, Martinez. Where was she from? She just she didn't understand English. It might have just been a re- weird request, okay. right? Yeah, right. Like who sits down with strangers when there's a virus? You do. Right? <laughs> um, well, she was at my table. Yeah, and there was no other there was no other tables, right? So then we sat together, and I was looking at stuff, and then we met, right? And I booked an Airbnb, yeah, or whatever. I found a hotel. <clears throat> I think it was set up for like say forty two bucks a night or something like that. That's all right. That's um, reasonable. Yeah, yeah, totally. So um, I got her to take a picture of my phone, right? And then my phone died. And then her and her friend like led me to this place that I was staying at. And I pulled my bags along. My bags were really heavy. Okay. I was carrying like 50 kilos of stuff. Wow. Right. And uh, um, we got to the door of the place and it was like a, it was like a brick apartment building with maybe like six to six units per floor, maybe like a four story building. Yeah. Right. And, uh, um, we said goodbye. I said goodbye to that person. Right. And, uh, I went upstairs and the door was locked and nobody answered or anything. And my phone was dead. So I just left my bags in the hallway. Yeah. And, um, I was in a, I was on a major street and I was in a, like a, I don't know what you call it. Like, a, like a restaurant. Hey, I'm busy. Please don't come in. Who's that? I don't know. Um, but there's, we'll get into that later. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I went down the, uh, the artsy street, right? And, and, and what, what uh, time was this when you were, uh, when you arrived, when you dropped your bags off and then you started going down the artsy street? What, what, what time was this roughly? Was it daytime, nighttime? I probably left my phone at the gas station at say six o'clock PM. The charge and then i you know i walked down the street and got something to eat i think i might have went to the uh um the quebec marijuana control board place yeah right which was a long walk and then uh i don't know uh on my way back like um this guy was walking the other way right like with his head on, with his eyes on the ground, right? And I was like, hey man, you want a beer, right? And so like we hung out and had a beer and he lives on the streets of Montreal, yeah, right? <laughs> he showed me where his little cubby hole, where he, you know, like where he lives. And like, I don't get it, man. He, he's like, he's like, he's celebrating the 12th anniversary of like, like when he got out of jail for something mediocre, right? And he's okay. still living on the streets. I was like, on, clean your act up, but Whoa. like we totally hung out for a couple hours and we hit yeah. it off and I bought him some food and uh, you know we we uh we went to like uh like the lobby you know one of those lobbies like of a of like a commercial building or something like yeah, that so yeah yeah first door but yeah you need you know need access to the next one yeah so that's yeah. where we hung out and had our let's call it poutine I don't know what it was right. <laughs> yeah uh, nice yeah poutine is awesome so for for anybody not watching it's uh it's basically like uh chips and cheese curds with gravy that's famous in canada in french french canada i think yeah so uh yeah then we said goodbye i went back to the uh, gas station picked up my phone figured out how to get into the room um the hotel was like a three-bedroom apartment with a little skinny kitchen and a bathroom yeah. And no common living space. So the guy just rents out the rooms. Okay. Right? Yeah. I would assume he lives in the one where somebody was staying. Yeah. And then, like, I was a guest and there's another guest. And yeah, it was good. Free shampoo. <laughs> Basically, all the leftovers <laughs> from other people, right? Free, free, all the, free all shampoo. The and stuff he, like, holds on to you and, like, you know free toilet paper you're like ross from friends you're like filling up your bag full of shampoo and toilet paper uh just stealing like light bulbs and things (laughs) these are free they come with the room (laughs) (laughs) yeah there's a there's a coffee pot in my closet right a little fridge okay and uh i had the the fire escape 
room, so I didn't have a lock on my door. Um, you didn't have a lock on, totally, on you. It's totally fine. He told me he told me yeah. later that there's a lock on the closet if I wanted. Okay. Right? Well, if you so I booked to the one night get and, the and then I found a way to get a hold of them so that I wouldn't have to use bookings.com again. Yeah, yeah. And I think he charged me more money. <gasps> well, oh, no. Like, than bookings.com did, but, like, as long as um, Silicon Valley is not getting my money, I don't mind paying more. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, he charged me more for the weekend, too, right? And, and New okay. Year's Eve, right? Yeah. Um, and I was... Of the opinion that I just pay for one night and then tomorrow I'll pay for one night and so on. Like, um, but he made sure that I paid for New Year's Eve and the next day. Yeah, which I'm yeah. So happy. About. Yeah, like, that's just, a really smart move. Yeah, just just in case you you know anything could happen. You know, New Year's Eve you could you could end up anywhere. Right. I don't know. Yeah. So um, yeah, I couldn't go to New York, so. I uh, yeah made the best of it in Canada. I had a look at the fire escape from outside, and there's access to the roof, so I went and had a look up there. <laughs> He's like, "Oh yeah, of course you did." <laughs> so then I went and bought a couple hundred dollars worth of fireworks, <laughs> and I shot fireworks off from the roof at like <laughs> nine or ten o'clock before a curfew because they brought in COVID curfew in okay. Montreal on New Year's Eve at ten p.m. Wow, that sucks. Yeah. Um, so then like I got my fireworks off before then, and then I put on my high vis jacket yeah. and I got some firewood and a case of beer from the gas station across the street. And I hiked up to the top of Mount Royal, which is the mountain that Mount Montreal is named after. Yeah. And I had a fire at the lookout on like in the parking lot. It was perfect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you're like, forget about that lockdown. I'm going to the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just knew that nobody else would be there. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. So idea. therefore I would be allowed to have a fire. Was it not really cold though? Were you like you were okay because you had the fire, but like surrounding you, was it, you know, was there any wild no, animals it wasn't or really cold? No. Was no. did you, it was did you see... I think it might have been it snowed the next day when it was a little bit yeah. below zero? Okay. So um, so you were and my high yeah. is like a Helly Hansen like yeah. wicked jacket too. So you right? had like a you know a thick jacket on. You had a couple of beers inside you, so you were warm. You had the fire, but did you see or hear like any wolves or bears or anything like that when you were around there, or owls or any, anything weird? Who? Yeah, you know, like animals. Like, wow. <laughs> um, have you Dude, ever heard you, of the? You week? get me every time. I'm so gullible. <laughs> have you ever heard of the wheat to go? No, Windigo. A win it's, wind uh, like a Windago. Uh, maybe something. Yeah, like a. Isn't that a thing that transforms though? Oh no, it's uh, um, like 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 a Skinwalker, like skin from it, Skinwalker Ranch. A uh, Windago. Um, yeah, kind of like um, like half man, half dingo, or something. No, or am uh, I thinking of something? Uh, else? It's it's a um a common. Uh, creature from mythical native, native Canadian North American culture. Yeah. Right. And it's uh, um, somebody that's been banished from society because they've uh, run amok. Yeah. And uh, tasted human flesh. <laughs> is is this a confession now? <laughs> this is what. No, I, that's what I was worried about up there. Okay. A week ago. Yeah. Much. The thing well, is, uh, like there's no wildlife there. There's really? squirrels. That's it. It's, well, it's like it's the mountain in the middle of the city. Uh, okay. Right. There's some cool paths going up there. There's there's like like because it's a fort. Like yeah. Montreal's a fort, right? They they have the big like rock wall that's ten feet high and ten feet thick, um, surrounding it. And I followed the pathways up, and I lost I lost my wallet and um, my bear claws, like real bear claws. I lost them. Oh no! And uh, um, I got drunk and high, and had a fire on top of the mountain for a couple hours, and I had my <laughs> little stereo, and I danced, and uh, <laughs> you no, know, three or four in the morning, I walked back, and I went back to my place. And, yeah, uh, yeah. So it was it was pretty amazing, yeah. right? Yeah. And then I was super hungover, right, as one would be, and uh, uh, eventually. 
like I recovered and I went upstairs, like onto the roof and, and dealt with whatever I had left up there. And I found a different wallet of mine. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh, right. So then, so then he had somebody coming the next day. Okay. Right? So you have so, to pack up. And there, was, and there was COVID curfew, right? And they speak French there. So it was time for me to go. Yeah. So I went yeah. to the train station and determined that the best deal would be for me just to, to buy a ticket to Ottawa. Yeah. Right. So I hopped on the train to Ottawa. Took me a couple, two hours, maybe an hour and a half, something like that. And then went and booked into a hotel there. And ha- had you ever been there before? Uh, I think I spent one night there before. Okay. In Ottawa. And ha- had you ever been to Montreal before? Like, you know, uh, yes, yeah, the same trip. Okay. That, that trip I'd flown into Ottawa and then I stayed at the hostel and then it took Greyhound to Montreal and then I went to one of the festivals in Montreal. Yeah. And then I took the Via train to Toronto. Yeah. And then a friend of mine came and picked me up and we went to Niagara Falls and then we went back to Montreal. Where oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And, and then had, had, had you back. been, had you been to uh, the falls before or was that your first time? That time. Yeah. That was the only time. Oh wow! What was it like, like when you were there? Can you describe? Well, it's, it's it? really cool to be out on that boat. Yeah. Right. Did like you go on the, that on made of the, the mist? Yeah. Did you did you go on that on the maiden yeah. mist? Yeah. The the first so time really I cool. yeah I was gonna say the first time I ever um saw that boat or heard that name was in um Bruce Almighty, you know that Jim Carrey film. <laughs> oh. I see it. Get comfy. Get comfortable. Yeah. We're in for the long haul. Did you see how many right. cups of tea I made? Um, I ordered some coffee while I was waiting. Ooh, I went no. inside. So, um, so I was gone up until recently, right? Dos. So somebody, um, somebody messaged me to move into my place when it was really cold here in Alberta. Today. And, I, and I told them to deal with, um, you got three cups. Well, that wasn't for anybody else. That was just for you. Yeah, they were all for me. Because uh, last time we... <laughs> We we were going for three hours, weren't we? So I thought, man, this time I need I need some cheese and uh, and I need some tea <laughs> just to keep me going. Not that I'm probably I'm not going to eat cheese while we podcast. I mean, that would be a first. That would be a Cybernot Club first eating sliced cheese on the podcast. So I picked up some cheese in Montreal. Okay, and, how uh, how is the cheese over there? Because obviously those people are. You know, they're almost French, essentially. Um, um, France is famous I, for its cheese. I asked the guy that was in the store, and he told me which one he would have gone with, so I went with that one. Yeah. Um, I think I bought wine there, too. And uh, so I, I carried that with me until I ran out. It was good. Yeah, it was yeah. good cheese. I don't, I don't remember what kind it was. Okay. But, like, it was, yeah. like, you know, like a wheel of cheese wrapped in, like, a wax mesh kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Right? Was it like a hard or a soft cheese? Was it white or was it like yellowy, creamy, or what was it like? The it was white. I would yeah. say I don't know. Like I, I, I really ate it with like breaking it off with my fingers. I didn't have any okay. utensils. No, no, I had a little like a super sharp knife. One of those. Was it so? Was it crumbly or was it soft, no. like mushy? No. What was it? Like? Was it hard? It wasn't crumbly at all. Okay. It was. It was consistent. It was, it was, you know, it was uh, like you could squish it, I suppose. Okay. Or you could break it apart. Almost like a cheddar, almost. Softer than a cheddar. Okay. But like, like harder than a brie or something like that, right? Yeah. So like a Gloucestershire cheese or... Maybe you haven't even had that because that's like an English. No, no, I, I haven't. This, this is like that was me like going out and trying new things. That one, yeah, yeah. I had mozzarella before and cheddar. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, um, um, I was kind of um, I was following your journey a little bit because um, during your your most recent trip, you were doing um, plenty of sort of live streams on Facebook. Um, so I was, you know, I was catching up on the recordings and the, there was one where, um, did you get pulled over by the police? <laughs> uh, yeah, lots, quite a what? bit. Okay. So what was, yeah, uh, what, yeah t- tell us about that. What's the story there? 
Well, let me, let's just run through the whole trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. I'm so, keen. so Ottawa. Um, I still hadn't done the accounting for my election. Yeah. Right. My campaign manager is supposed to do it, but like, man, he didn't really want to be a campaign manager. He was going to take care of my accounting for my civic election. Yeah. Right. He didn't want to do the fed. Like, we didn't plan on that. Right. So, I sent the document with my personal expenses to him at the three month mark. Right. I took a picture of it and and uh, whatever WhatsApped it to him. Right. So that like it sent. And so then when I was in Ottawa, I got a hold of, I enjoyed the hotel and the next day I toured around Ottawa and checked out the parliament buildings and that kind of stuff. And I was like, you know what? It's not that cold out here. I don't oh. want to pay $160 for a hotel room. Dude, I'm sorry. There's somebody at my door. I just need to go get this. I'll be right back. Yeah, I'm going to okay. go make a pot of coffee. I'll be, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, we'll pour pause a coffee. It. I'll be back too. Okay, okay. I'm not ready yet. I'm here. Yeah, I'm pretty close. Okay. When I was hey. up for- yeah, sorry. I was I was gonna say sorry about that, dude. I'm I'm the only one here uh, at the minute, and I had a it's gonna sound weird, but a delivery of um a lot of tuna um from Amazon. <laughs> How much like, is a lot? Uh, you know, like um, do you get them in small cans? Uh, yeah, there? yeah. So yeah, they're about what three centimeters high. Yeah, yeah. So like um four times four of those for about eleven quid. Four times yeah. four uh, however many that uh was that thir- I don't know. Let me just I went to a, a tuna Six, sixteen sixteen cans for eleven quid, which is uh eleven quid, which is like one pound forty five a can. It's kind of pricey over here. So I went to a cannery in American Samoa. Yeah. And there's a like a, a, a big statue of a tuna with sunglasses on. And it's Charlie the tuna. Nice. So I posed with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, dude. So um did you grab yourself a coffee whilst uh we were interrupted? <laughs> no, we sort of started. Yeah. We're in the house. Yeah. And it said to whoever's there, the person that's there, Valerie, I yeah. said, Hey. Do you drink coffee? It's like, yeah. Can you make coffee? Right? Hey, the coffee pot's there. There's coffee grounds, or you can grind your own. There's the the uh, filter. So I figured, you know, I can go just steal a cup of coffee now. No, it's yeah. not made. Oh, uh, okay. There's no water in the machine. The coffee hasn't been got out. There's no filter there. Like, the jug for the coffee has been removed and the lid's off and it's just like it's so disappointing that somebody has so little whatever it is in life vision uh you know whatever right so i um i'm a big believer in people giving people a hand up and uh, so I mentioned to her, because she was walking by my house, that I had come up with a plan for a shelter, right? Because I know her a little bit, right? Yeah. So, so who, is, who is Valerie? She's like a homeless girl from Fort Saskatchewan. Okay. Right? She's probably about 35 years old. Yeah. Uh, she could be from the UK. You can take okay. her back. Yeah, we'll take her back. <laughs> um, well, she'd have to decide to go there. Okay, so we'd have to have the motivation, unless you actually came and picked her up and carried her home, but that's not going to happen. Where, where right? did you find her? Well, she was walking past my house. Okay. Right? And so I mentioned to her this shelter idea that I had. And she yeah. told me she needed a place to stay tonight, right? 
and not so tonight, have you, but have you just met today or how, how long have you? No, on, the, on the, day, the day that I got back. Okay. Right. Yeah. So she's yeah, not in chains. I chain. have an extra room, et cetera. Right. Yeah. She, so you don't have, you don't, you don't have her in chains. I was going to say, you don't have her in chains. Like she's free to go if she wants to. <laughs> we, we don't have to call the Mounties. No, no. Um, I don't know. <laughs> she asked me for internet the other day, and I was like, fucking go use internet wherever you use internet at. Yeah. Like, get the fuck out of my house for the day. What are you doing here? Is she uh, is she attractive? Or, you know, is she okay? No, or... she doesn't have any drive in life. So she has, there's no attraction there. Yeah, so Did perfect. You was... You've got yourself a wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so you found yourself a woman who lives in your house, um, eats your food, drinks your drink, uses your internet, doesn't pay any bills, doesn't have sex with you. That's a wife. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Uh, there's, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I, that, that's supposed to be later. Okay. But, yeah. but uh, I, I, don't, I don't like. Yeah, so um, so where you were up to you you went to see Niagara Falls you and then right. you were you were back and forth and then so, you went so to I went Ottawa. up to Prince George to visit my family for Christmas yeah and we boiled water in the morning and went outside and threw it in the air oh it's, right okay yeah it freezes really cool when it's minus thirty eight degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit because they're the same temperature at that point okay um yeah so so like. But then on Boxing Day, um, I needed to do some work on my vehicle, and like the doors were sticking and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. So I was looking for a, like a garage to, to to just to take it to somewhere I could you know like get out of the weather, right? So I went to downtown to Fifth Street Parkade, and it wasn't like closed in, but there was like you know two walls like get in next to, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, WD forty, that stuff's amazing. Yeah, yeah, um, it's so, so yeah, good. I did that, and then like, man, there was a lot of people that spent the night outside there. Wow, right, a lot, like 30, 40, right, like standing on the sidewalk with a blanket over them. Wow, one person just to hold that heat, right, in the daytime, right, when it was warmer, right. So when I was in Ottawa, I was like, man, they slept outside when it was minus 40. I'm going to sleep outside when it's minus 15. Yeah. So uh, I left my clothes suitcase at the hotel, and I took my big hockey bag that had, like, a big mattress in it, like a, like a, like a decent mattress kind of thing, yeah. right? And I have a big double sleeping bag. And I headed down to the uh, Riel Canal. In Ottawa, that's their big thing, right? And I cruised along there for a while, and then I, I, I decided to chill out underneath the bridge. But I went to the bridge that's right where the um, where the locks are, so there's a waterfall there. Yeah. And I set up camp there, but it was kind of wet because like because the waterfall's there, so it's really misty, right? But uh, yeah, I made it the night minus fifteen. Damn. And was was there anybody else around you? Like there were, you know, the the because you were essentially, you made yourself homeless. Like, is that not, you were taking quite a risk there to do that? Well, somebody like, somebody told me that I can't sleep there and the police will come. Yeah. And then I, wait, then I put my sleeping bag back over my head and waited for the police. Uh, and then they never came. They, no, they're not going to come. No. Right? Why, it's not, it's, it's not a worthwhile cause. Right? Do you, um, have you ever heard of the, the beat generation? Beat? Uh, the beat generation like beat. uh jack chirac you know th those guys the beats the you know people in the sort of 60s in in california they, they were a lot like you like they'd go out and they would meet random people have drinks go and sleep in you know it, you just just wander like wandering around um you know i i feel like you're you're part of that like today like that there's well, that was there's, a wonderful trip what i just did yeah. I just opened myself right up, right? Yeah. You know? Like like that morning, sorry, when I when I got up, 
I went and got a Tim Hortons coffee and then I like pushed through the Tim Hortons co- like like into the building next door so I could go to the bathroom because Tim Hortons was closed because of Omicron, like the, the bathroom portion of it. Yeah. And I was like in like a, like a government building of some sort, right? And I went to the security desk and they told me where the bathroom was. And then when I was done, like went and found somewhere to plug in my phone and I chilled there for the day. And that's where I did all my, um, all my stuff with Elections Canada, right? And they, they taught me how to run through these papers, right? Yeah. And I got to charge up all my stuff and like, and I chilled there for like hours, like five hours or something like that, right? And yeah, it was good. And then I went and finished up with like, like I went back to the hotel and, and they did like, like we, like I got the app so I could take a picture of the document so that it would come out square. And then my, my uh, campaign manager could sign it and then send it back to me. And then I sent it to the hotel and then they printed it off and then I put it all together. And I looked at it and I was like, this isn't the right date. Come on, Alex. <laughs> so I had to get him to do it again. Because he just copied the same date I did. <laughs> right. And so then uh um yeah, so then it was all ready, right? So like I, I went and took it to the post office and mailed it over across the river to Gatineau. Yeah. Right? And so so what what was that? That was something to do with um getting elected. It was the uh the election expenditures. Okay. I spent eight thousand dollars. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, so was that like a that's like a gift? I right? got I got two hundred and ninety three votes. Can you do the math on that? Yeah. What did I pay for vote? Quite a bit. Right. That's good though. How much did I pay? Did I pay fifty dollars a vote? Uh. Hmm. Okay. Let me let me do the maths for you. All right. What was it? Eight. $8,000. How many votes? 293, I think. $27.30 per vote. $27, eh? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Next time somebody tells me they voted for me, I'm going to give them $27.30. <laughs> <laughs> So, dude, um, I just quickly looked it up. Um, the beat generation, because I don't think my explanation was good enough. Beat? It says B E A T B E A T beat. You okay. know, like a drum, beating a drum. So, yeah. it says um, the beat generation was a liter- literary literary movement started by a group of authors whose work explored and influenced American culture and politics in the post-war era. The members of the beat generation developed a reputation as new bohemian hedonists who celebrated nonconformity and spontaneous creativity. Wow. That's you, dude. Oh, you, yeah. You're a bohemian hedonist who, like, you know, you're nonconformist, spontane- like, spontaneous creativity, spon- spontaneous traveling and meeting people and getting drunk. Nonconformist? And- How can you say that, man? <laughs> booster shot. I got a booster really? shot, man. Really? Did you? Yeah. Hold on, wipe me out. Yeah. Yeah. Like fevers, chills. I need a chicken soup to get me through that. Wow. Are yeah, you chicken. um are you worried about your heart at all? Like, you know, just people which which one did you get? Which booster shot? No. No, you're not. I didn't think so. <laughs> Moderna. Moderna, okay. I, yeah. No, I, I got I don't sorry man, I didn't somebody else's department to figure that shit out. Yeah. Right? Um, my friend's girlfriend works at the pharmacy. He got his, I got mine a week later. Yeah. Same pharmacy, that pharmacy, right? Uh, now I have a pharmacist. Okay. Right? Because of that, right? Now I've like, like not, not her. I wouldn't want her to be my pharmacist, but her boss. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I had to, to talk to him about something else when I came back. Right. And then when we hung up, I just phoned him right back and I asked him if I could get a COVID chest shot. And he's like, um, you know, five months. Uh, looks like it's been seven since yours. Yeah, you can come in. I was like, do yes. I need to make an appointment? He's like, no, no, anytime. Yeah. <laughs> that's, what, like, that's what I did on the, like, the day after I got home, right? Um, cool. Cool. My plan was to get COVID-19 in late January when I was at home. 
to actually get it and then yeah i was gonna get i was gonna get alberta healthcare to come and give it to me okay they'll let me i still want it i i actually had it um over christmas and then um and then my wife got it as well um so is it on the crom um well they, they don't give you that that information you just test positive um you know they don't they don't tell was you your on the prom numbers yeah. really high at the time um yeah yeah it was yeah. it was flying around this area um at the time so more than likely it was that um yeah. but yeah i'd gone two years um, almost two years without you know without getting infected like being super safe not not even yeah. being super safe like you know just kind of so where do you figure you got it from how do you figure you got it um well i probably got it from where i work uh because i come into contact with a lot of people there um and i or you know i also i traveled down to essex by train um yeah. sort of like a week or two before um so you know i i could have got it on that journey um you ever go to brentwood go where brentwood yeah 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 my that's that's pretty much where i was yeah i was down there about the uh the peasants rebellion no 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 it's basically like the first time people stood up for their rights <clears throat> okay right so it was kind of after like black death had really done a big toll on everybody yeah and uh um so they brought in a new tax right and there's people avoiding the tax right yeah. <clears throat> so instead of just letting it be right they went after them right and the tax collectors were also checking to see if the girls were virgins because that was part of the thing right and fuck off tax collector get your fucking hand out of my daughter's skirt right yeah um so uh one um guy he was a baker i don't remember what his first name is but his last name was baker okay right and so being a baker he is stuck in that role of a servant it's a servancy right yeah and uh he can't move up in class right but i mean he's a pillar of his community because he makes everybody's bread so um yeah he's he stood up at the uh you know at at the public meeting and they uh, surrounded or chased away or beat up the tax collector and his security guard, right? And then they came back with more people, you know, like a, like a small detachment or something like that. And, well, they'd already started something. So they had, like, you know, they grew a following and they basically had a start of a riot there. And then things changed around after that. Yeah, I can see, um, I can see a picture here. Uh, let me, let me just uh, see if I can share this with you. Yeah, I just watched a little YouTube uh, explanation of it, and the guy, like, whoever was doing the show, he went to the locations. So hopefully, you can see this now. Um, there's a there's a picture here of the the peasants' rebellion or the peasants' yeah. revolt in 1381. Uh, you can see this yeah. geezer here is wielding what looks like uh, some sort of Saracen sword. Uh, Saracen, eh? Yeah. And then here, this guy's got like a straight blade. That looks like a Roman uh, blade. And then... Do you see anybody with a bread knife? Because that would have been uh, um, Bob the bar the baker. Okay. So the so it looks like there's... Uh, this guy's got what appears to be a snake around there. So that could indicate that he's actually a doctor um okay, or, so so the guy in the front with the black pants yeah this guy he he looks like he's pretty dressed up what about the guy behind him is he a peasant this yeah, fella like, they're nice clothes aren't they yeah i actually you know i think uh, the, these look they they look lordly they look you know gentrified don't they um uh, they don't look yeah. like peasants uh nah, but what, like like who knows what they really looked like right when this drawing was yeah, made yeah yeah there's like a whole arm, a whole army back here as well. Um, oh, yeah. We should find out when this drawing was made later. Um, it might it might say here. So uh, it says the Peasants' Revolt of 1381 in England began in Brentwood, Essex, as a protest at the collection of poll tax, and reached a climax at Smithfield, London. Richard II, 1367 to 1800, 
What? 1367 to 1800? That's too many And then Richard II was like 14 years old or something like that. Okay, but he still wouldn't have been... So so his uncle was like, added a new tax and people were like, as if you're not just taking the money, right? Yeah. So he said it... it, uh, Richard II met the Kentish peasants who, under what Tyler, um, were demanded the end of serfdom, so basically slavery, um, right. where, where they would um, they would work on somebody's land and then also have to pay a landlord for the privilege of working that land. Um, during the meeting, William Walworth, Lord Mayor of London, wounded Watt Tyler, who was taken to St. Bartholomew's Hospital, but was later dragged out of the hospital and beheaded. <laughs> And apparently, Watt this, Tyler? Yeah, um, so we can can have a look at that in a second. So this it says is a 19th century lithograph. So yeah, this was made much much later. So this is made in the 1800s, uh, right? Back when, we, when once we got a printing press. Yeah, greatest thing since sliced bread, right? <clears throat> yeah. Or did it come first? Hmm, printing press did- came before sliced bread. Yeah, probably. But why why did it take so long for people to realize that you could make a sandwich? Like that just seems obvious to me. No, uh, the the sliced bread was when a company pre-cut your bread. Oh, right? okay. A okay, loaf okay. of bread wrapped up. It yeah, was already re- sliced. Ready, ready sliced. Yeah. Yeah. So um it just says that what Tyler was the leader of the 1381 Peasants' Revolt in England, and he led a group of rebels from Canterbury to London to oppose the institution of a poll tax and to demand economic and social reforms. Um, while the brief rebellion enjoyed early success, Tyler was killed by officers loyal to King Richard II during negotiations at Smithfield in London. Yeah, bad times. It was James Baker, the, the, the guy that's... He, 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 he threw the first punch. Okay. Right? Like two weeks earlier or whatever, right? Not this guy. <laughs> uh, no, it was probably him. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely that guy. Um, let's have a look, see if it was... What, what uh, about James Baker, Peasants result, Revolt? Yeah, yeah, good idea. Uh, Thomas Baker. <clears throat> Thomas Baker. Yeah. Uh, Thomas Baker, an English landowner, was one of the leaders who initiated the Peasants' Revolt of 1381. Thomas Baker was holding the Pockets Croft alias Baker's Croft in Fobbing. Um, Okay, so he was he was the landlord of Baker's Croft. Um, This holding still exists, although by the time of the 19th century, the uh, uh, tithe map, it had become known as uh, Whitehall Six Acres. Um, so he died in these are places that like this little town or like a yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's that's down in Chelmsford, um, or that's where he died. He died on the 4th of July, 1381. Um, yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah, so the villagers led by Thomas Baker, a local landowner, told Brampton that they would give him nothing and that he was forced to leave the village empty handed. So Robert. Belknap, Chief Justice of Common Pleas, was sent to investigate the incident and to punish the offenders. On the 2nd of June, he was attacked at Brentwood. By by this time, the violent discontent had spread and the counties of Essex and Kent were in full revolt. Soon, people moved on to London in an armed uprising. Whoa. Yeah, and he was hung, drawn, and quartered. Who, Thomas Baker? uh, Yeah, hanged, drawn, and quartered, which is uh, pretty pretty tasty uh so, so nobody can call um claim the her- his heritage uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> there we yeah. go um yeah so that was uh that was the peasants revolt yeah first riot whoa hey Pre- you um, know back, back in those days like i, I mean pe- people are afraid today a lot walking down the streets in a lot of places thinking you know oh there's so much murder going on um you know because the, the way the news projects everything and you hear things happening all over the world but there's like many less instances of violence i think uh nowadays compared to back then i think most people are good yeah yeah i do i i, I trust everyone I give everybody a trust, right? That's that's good. 
But what happens when, like, when that trust is abused? Like, then you you walk. walk well, then I do it one more time. You give it. You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then after that, one more time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to do with Valerie? Like, that's you know, what are you going to do with her? Uh, it's a story. Obviously, maybe you can't. You can't talk so loud, like because she's in the other. I, room. I don't know. I, I asked her to write a list of what she wants or needs last yeah. night, and she didn't do it. Oh, right. Does she and, have, uh, um, is she, is she, and, and then I like I was in the house and I brought in a bunch needs of stuff. Or something. The, huh? Like, does she have? Is she is she special in the way? Like, does she have like special educational needs? Maybe she needs help. Maybe, you know, maybe she can't read. Maybe she can't write. Or. You know, maybe something like that. Maybe she can't make a list literally physically. I, I, I tried to help, but what like what more can I do? Right? I gave her a place to stay, a place to clean up, organize her stuff. Uh she cooked, she made me some uh panini with uh, uh pesto sauce, right? Have you slept with her yet? Um she called it El Dante because it wasn't cooked all the way. Yeah, yeah. El Dante, El Dante. yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then uh, I was cleaning up the garage last night, so I threw a bunch of stuff in the laundry basket. This weird candle holder that my roommate got from his house, and it was here. I was like, "Why is this? Why is this here on the shelf behind me? I, I go put, put this map. It's in the way, right? Okay, let's take it inside, right?" Hmm. So I threw it in the laundry basket with a sweater and like a like a fake skin, right? <laughs> and I took it into the living room. And I was doing some other stuff, and I was like, "Hey, Valerie, can you uh, like can you set up this candle holder, right? Like in in the lawn basket, there's a candle holder, and she walked out of the room, right? I'm like, where are you going, right? And I like I lost it. What the fuck are you leaving the room for? It's fucking talking to you. It's giving you instructions. Yeah." Right? And then I left the house. I came back up to the garage, but I was right pissed. Right? Because I was like, what you did right there was completely useless. Right? And she was like, well, I thought you were going to bring it. Well, wanted me to bring it to you. Well, I didn't ask you to bring it to me. Hmm. Right? I didn't even finish anything. I said something to you and you left the room while I was talking to you. So I, 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 like, I, I had enough, right? So I was like, okay. What I want you to do is in, like, in the living room, I want you to set up the candle holder, right? It's in the laundry basket. Like, set it up on the shelf and take the sweater and throw it in my suitcase and take the rod staff, throw that in my suitcase too, and put the laundry basket with the other laundry baskets, right? <laughs> and, like, that didn't get done, right? Okay, so... so yeah, so, but what, so like, what can I do? I can't. I can't. Yeah, but there has to be there has to be a reason for it. Like, if you were part like part way through a sentence, um, and you were like given an instruction, and then um, she just kind of that, walked that off. second time, like when I when I told her I was mad, so I could yeah. see why she wouldn't focus on that because I was mad about it, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, but then like later on at night, she came into the garage while I was on my phone, and I was like. You know, she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm on my phone, right? And then she sat down on the couch and she said, well, that's a nice tool bag. And I was like, hey, this is my space. Get out. Right? Like, I didn't, in, I'm not opening up the door and getting off my phone so that you can tell me I have something nice. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you want to, if I can have a conversation about something, sure. Right? But don't, like, I know I have a nice tool bag. And it's it's nothing fucking special, right? Are it's you a not, bunch of tools? Are you not? Yeah, but like, are you not worried that um, theft? You know, yeah. No, no. She she found twenty dollars in uh in one of my one of my books. It's probably been in there for about six years. In yeah. uh in the that little paraplegic guy in his book about the solar system. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stephen Hawking. Yeah. That's good. A brief history of time. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know how Stephen Hawkins dances? No. Like this. Sorry, I'm just kidding. 
I made a great TikTok about that though. This is so rude. That's so bad. <laughs> right. Um, Let's squeeze a couple more in there. When I was in uh, Ottawa, I found a, a statue of Terry Fox. Who's Terry Fox? Terry Fox uh, was an athlete in high school, and then he got leukemia and um, had his leg amputated. And he started a track across the country called a Man in Motion, unless I was Rick Hansen, but whatever. And so he, he was walking across Canada in, like, 1977, and um, do you know how to kill a fox? How to kill a fox? Yeah. <clears throat> what, like in Cut real life? Or... Make him run across Canada. <laughs> <laughs> well, Terry flops, right? So he lost his leg and he died halfway <laughs> walking across Canada in 1980. <laughs> I'm, sorry. Right? I'm sorry. So I, made, I totally I made... missed that. Like, I make that joke with the statue, with the TikTok, right? Yeah. You know? And it's like... Just, just like the... Uh, it's rude, but it's not racist, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's where the humor comes in, is is that, like, you're caught off ground, a guard on it, right? Yeah. So we have a Terry Fox run yearly, right? Where we raise money for his foundation, right? <laughs> so I've, I've organized one before, right? And had, like, 20, 30 people show up and... They even gave me money and I had to find somewhere to donate it to, right? But I think I raised like, you know, like 350 bucks or something like that, right? Mm. And, uh, but I was thinking like, I wonder if I could use my buddy's peg leg costume, like outfit, where he takes his leg and like kind of ties it into his belt and then has like a leg on that. Okay. <laughs> and then I could do the five kilometer race on Terry Fox Day with one leg. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like, you could do that. Yeah, like live in his shoes, right? Or shoe. Walk <laughs> a mile in his shoe. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. Oh. Um, do you think, like, if you've only got one leg, you get discount, you know, when you go to the shoe store? I, he was still wearing the same running shoe on the, on the little... Uh, the mechanical leg too. Oh, okay. So you don't get fifty percent off. No. <laughs> oh dear. Um, yeah. So I've I've got a, I've got a weird story. Um, that's kind of like your your story with uh, Valerie. <clears throat> so um, one time um, a few years ago, I was with some uh, mates of mine. And we went to uh, Preston from Blackpool to go and play golf uh, in this park. And so we're, we're just playing golf and dicking around, having a few beers. And there's this sort of um, half like Asian looking girl, like Oriental Asian um, comes over and, you know, gets, gets talking to us. Um, and she's all right looking. And, you know, so we give her the time, like, you know, just to see who she is and what's going on. Yeah. And then, you know similar sort of thing it turns out that she's got nowhere to go um mm -hmm. and then uh you know i was, just, I was thinking well yeah i could probably put you up and help you out you know i've got a, a girlfriend at home and you know a couple of dogs and stuff like that so you, you know we could probably find a place for you you could stay and sort your stuff out and um so you know, get her in the car and then we're we're driving back to uh to blackpool uh from preston like later on after a, a couple of hours and um she's she's talking about how she got fired from her job because her till was down um so she was working for for a supermarket and, and she was let go and and then you know her, her life had just kind of spiraled from there and then um I, I was just i was driving and i was getting You're more and more I met an uh, Inuit guy in Ottawa, and he told me how to build an igloo about yeah. 78 times. Yeah. We hung out for about an hour. Yeah. It's just like a spiral. This is a spiral. Take one. That's like he told me that like 78 times. Okay, so she spiraled out of control. She spiraled out of control. And so uh, I'm, I'm driving, <laughs> I'm thinking, now what? How, what am I going to say to 
you know, my girlfriend, my partner who I was living with for like four years, what am I going to say to her to say, oh, by the way, um, here's this chick that we just met in a park. <laughs> and then the stories were getting more and more kind of like weird. And like my anxiety was like building up and building up. And I just said, uh, actually, I'm really sorry. I think I'm going to have to just drop you off here. <laughs> so I pulled into an industrial estate and just dropped her off and just left her. And and I couldn't like I couldn't go that step further like you have. Like I tried, but I didn't have, I don't know, like the courage or whatever to like see it through and to actually help that person. Um, you know, because I was too scared that she was gonna rob me. Well, I've seen this girl floating around town for the last four years. Okay. Or more, right? Yeah. And and I came up with a plan of building eight foot by 12 foot houses with, with a uh, bad desk, smoke detector, window, door, plug in, shelf, right? Um, and renting them for $200 yeah. a month, right? Um, I could probably get a lot of the materials, um, like, like Home Depot will give me gift cards, right? I could probably get free labor to build them, et cetera, right? So I, I I did a name search on a charity, right? And that's as far as I went with that because I got something else I'm working on incorporating right now, which, you know, is, is way more important to me, right? Yeah. Um. So I'd mentioned that to her before, or maybe I said it to her on the day that I came home. Plus, meanwhile, while I was gone, somebody got a hold of me and they wanted to rent my basement suite. And I told them to just go ahead and get a hold of my roommate. Right. And um, it was really easy to suspect, suspect drugs with that person. Right. Okay. Like the regular street drugs, wherever they are, uh, crystal meth and fentanyl and whatever, you know, GHB and all that stuff. Right. Um, so her and her boyfriend are living in the bedroom of my basement suite, which is connected to the house. Right. Mm. And, you know, like I got home, my, my roommate went and picked me up at the air, at the train and took me down to the airport. I picked up my vehicle. I came home. Um, and she was walking by and I talked to her and she said she needed a place to stay. So I, I, I gave her the foamy that I brought with me on my travels. Right. And yeah. gave her my spare room and whatever, right? Here, you know, I told her that I was going to charge her a dollar a day for rent and, you know what I mean? Like, just make it easy, right? Yeah. Um, and that was fine for day one, right? And then day two came. And then on day three, she didn't leave the house, right? And that's where it bugged me, Yeah. right? Because, like, um, you know, you're not entitled to go upstairs and have a bath. Right? Upstairs is not your space. There's a shower okay. right next to your room. Yeah. I live upstairs. Baths cost a dollar. Right? Like you gotta heat hot water and you use a lot more of it, right? Yeah. And now you're like, there's no reason for that. Right? So, so did you set I mean, like did you set boundaries nice. and expectations when she moved in? Like, did you let her know no. like this is no, your no, space? No, I, this is okay. No, I didn't I didn't here uh, this is a place to sleep. Here you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And then and people do whatever they're gonna do. She did five, she did give me the twenty dollars under the book. But that like whatever. Yeah. Right. Um, but last night I said, Well, like, what do you need? What do you like? She said something about her phone, like something like this. And I was like, well, write down what you need. And then this morning I asked her about it. She hasn't done it. Mm. So I, I looked at I don't know what his name, hierarchy of needs. Yeah, right? Maslow. Yeah, Maslow, right? So I mean, I just touched base, so like, like while we were getting ready to call, right? You know, so I was gonna bring that up with her, but no, I, I like, <sighs> last night I told everybody we're having breakfast between eight and nine today, <laughs> right? We're gonna make a nice, healthy breakfast, and everybody's getting up between eight and nine, and then at yeah. nine o'clock, everybody's getting the fuck out of my house, right? They yeah. come back. Yeah. But they're not sleeping in, 
right? They're like, I have a whole shitload of work to do. So um, I'm really disappointed that she couldn't figure out how to make coffee, right? You know what I mean? And so therefore, I can't, like, I, I, I don't know what to do. I can't give her something to do because, like, because she doesn't listen to the instructions. So she... So, so this, she sure doesn't have to do it. She's got to go to the drop-in center. I'll take her to the home shelter, whatever, right? So so this, you know, um, what you're experiencing with her, like this level of frustration, is probably one of the reasons why she is homeless. Like, Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, right? And yeah. so, it, like, I, I tried to, to, like, instill the, what are you going to do? Not, like... Hey, look at this opportunity, right? Yeah. Well, do, so you know, do you know her, any? Her, do you know anything about her? Like, have you spoken to her about her background or um, where she's come from? You know, who her family is, how she was raised, that sort of stuff. Like, what's happened to her while she's been on the streets? Maybe she's like. No, 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 I don't. I don't really care. I don't really want okay. to know those answers, right? Okay. She, she's, she gets sixteen hundred, sixteen hundred dollars a month from uh, Aish, which is right. uh right. So. That works out to what? A third of that is 550 bucks for rent. Yeah. Um, I could rent a room out for that, but I'm not willing yeah. to have that so, person stay at my house. So right? she's homeless, but she does get money. Like, Well, yeah, that's our social assistance for people with um, uh, uh, handicap trouble, non-disclosed, right? Okay. It's not too hard to get, right? So... Man, the lowest you can get, $500 a month is the lowest payout from welfare here. Wow. Right? Imagine living on that. That means, like, rent, you can afford, like, $175 a month for rent. That's, like, 100 pounds. Yeah. Right? So when I was in Prince George, remember that place where it was minus 40? Yeah. Yeah, I drove around downtown there, and I... uh Came up with a plan for a homeless shelter. Okay. Um, if you're interested in investing, I'd take ten thousand dollars from you. Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't have ten thousand dollars. <laughs> we'll borrow it. Um, so I was thinking, like, uh, like a concrete building. Yeah. Um, with bathrooms on both ends at the stairs. Uh, maybe one, two, three levels of, um. I'm going to call them apartments, but they're basically bedrooms, hmm. right? And then a nice rooftop. With, so you have access to the rooftop. So you got a spot to smoke meth and drink wine, right? No. <laughs> Those, well, why no. not? Why? No, give you a spot instead of fucking put it on a street corner, right? Yeah, but... And, you... then, and then there could be like social <laughs> services office on the main floor, bathrooms at the end of the hall... Don't those people, things are, people need they, to learn how to get like people need to have chores to do so yeah. they're contributing to the building yeah and charge them one third of their um rent welfare check right so it probably could house three levels i don't know like say 60 70 people right um but you, you've also got to worry about the um or c consider um you know, like aggravation and stuff like that. You might have to hire security or, you know, stuff like that, have things in place to make sure that there aren't, you know, petty crimes going on in your building when you have people like that. Get people from social services that are going to school there, right? Do do uh, internships, right? Plus have a, a nighttime watch person, possibly somebody that lives there too, Right. They might actually have their own bathroom, right? Have a kitchen on the main level um, that is like, like you can buy your month worth of food. You know what I mean? Like you get, you know, three meals a day kind of thing, mm -hmm. right? Like a soup, like a soup kitchen kind of thing. Um, I watched, uh, I watched four people talking about Moccasin Flats, the tent city in Prince George. Okay. Right, it's self-named for that, right? And they're like, "What are we going to do about tents, the mockers and flats?" Right? And there's a area of Prince George called College Heights. So I'm going to call this place Moccasin Heights. 
That's good. It is good. Like and and I'm gonna make money at it. I, I don't understand why. And I'm never gonna step yeah. foot on the place. Yeah. Right. Like I don't understand why the government don't. Um, you know how can they? How can in all honesty, like in a member of parliament or senator or whatever they are in your country or even here, how can they sleep at night knowing that their job is to serve the people of this country and they let so many hundreds of thousands of people go, you know, cold and hungry at night? My question is, if there was no poor, who would feed the rich? Yeah. Right? Like, you know, like, um, what's his name? Not Moss, the other guy. Uh, Microsoft. What's his name? Bill Gates. Bill Gates. He's got a product that everybody needs. He thought that up, right? Yeah. Why? Why? Why should he? Why should he put his kids in public school? Right? You know what I mean? Like, mm. like why? Why should he take public transit? Right? He like, he's brilliant. Right? Yeah. He worked harder. He had a better idea. Sure, he got money when he's, you know, he, his parents helped him out and he got to go to a u- good university and all that, right? But, but that he happens to a lot of people. Up in right? the morning and he came up with something and he worked hard at it. Yeah. <clears throat> right? So, you know, a, a lot of people went to that university and a lot of people got, got money from their parents, but not everybody came up with uh, Microsoft. Well, I, I, I get a lot of um, I get a lot of Elon Musk's little comments lately, right? I guess I'm a follower, but it's too much, right? <clears throat> and and so Elon says like I don't hire people because they have a degree. I, yeah. I have hired someone because they're capable of the job, right? You know, like so that works out really well for me, right? I I got a. Yeah. I got a journeyman certificate as an electrician, right? I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. Right? I did apply for a job yesterday when I got back here. We talked in, in, in December. So so what what do you want to do um, instead? You want to do your philanthropy. You want to, like, start a homeless shelter or help people who are on the streets, um, you know, or, or run for government, Those those kinds of things, rather than, um, you well, know. Step one is taking my 1997 Land Rover and turning it into a taxi cab in a small mountain town. Yeah. Right? That's step you, one. So have you not got a taxi company already in your mountain town? There, there's no taxi there, no. Okay. There was yeah. one a once upon a time, but it was an old grumpy guy and people didn't get along with them. And, yeah. you know, it put a bad p- taste in people's mouth. But right now there's a pipeline going through there and there's a lot of extra workers. Yeah. Right. There's also a downhill bike track. Right. I want to do alcohol delivery. Right. Like I, I want. So there's no, oh, there's no Uber like where you are. Uber's bullshit. You should never use it again. Seriously. That guy's a con artist who doesn't follow the rules and mm-hmm. bribes taxi drivers to start driving for him. And then takes the bribe away is, is your know, or, or bribes customers to start using it and then takes the incentives away as soon as he can get away with it. Yeah. He's dropped the wages for taxi drivers, right? People have killed themselves because they don't make enough money because they work in Uber. Right? So yeah. don't take Uber anymore. And like, let's ask your audience not to take Uber as well. Support the taxi cabs. Yeah, right? always go local. You know, the, well, they're licensed. The small right? guy. Yeah, that's what they do for a living. Yeah, and then the money doesn't go to California, right? Airbnb, it's bullshit. Mm. Right? What what happened to the local advertising uh, paper? That's that's lost now. Now your five yeah. percent goes to California, right? Yeah. I don't know. You're very passionate about this. It's good. It's a bunch of YouTube videos, right? But yeah, we I had a bed and breakfast when I was a child. We advertised yeah. in the local, you know what I mean? We paid our $60 a year for our, our ad in the accommodation guide, right? And then my mom stopped doing it and I still got phone calls. 
So I tried it out for a summer, right? Yeah. I just had to make beds and make a breakfast. It was pretty sweet, right? Maybe maybe some later in life I do that again, right? Bed and breakfast. Have a yeah, have one. Hmm. Maybe. So how how are you going to get this um, homeless shelter off the ground? Like, what are you thinking there? Um. Well, well I was driving around Prince George and picked out a piece of land. Right. Is this um, the land that you were telling me about last time? No, no. That's something else. Yeah. No, I was, it's, Prince George is um, in the, the geographical center of British Columbia. Um, it's where the uh, Fraser River and the Jacko River join. Hmm. There's uh, some pulp and paper mills there, so it has a little bit of smell to it. It's the, uh, the northern capital. Um, I don't population, say 100,000. I don't, I don't really know. Right? Yeah. And, uh, um, we, we have a whole society of bit of Canadians that have lost their, um, lost their family education. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like they identify themselves as dirty Indians instead of like, you know, um, members of the bear tribe, you know, bear clan or something like that, right? Yeah. You know, like like this orange shirt day, like I don't know. What was the was somebody the... had an orange shirt? Yeah. And they were taken away to residential school and they're so proud of this orange shirt, right? They had a new shirt to go to residential school. And it was taken away from them immediately, right? And they, they spent, like, I don't know how long you spend, most of your 10 months of your year in uh, a church-run school 200 miles away from your home yeah, where you're no longer allowed to speak your language. You're, you're not allowed to smudge. You're not allowed to be around the fire. You're not, you know what I mean? Like, like you got to learn Roman Catholic shit and, and you, your, your mom's not there anymore. And then, and then add physical, emotional, sexual abuse. Yeah. And then put that on for generations. And then like, and then you're just called a fucking drunk squaw. Right? Like, I don't know. So my mom bought me the Truth and Reconciliation findings for Christmas. It was pretty sweet. Um, there's 94 recommendations. Um, they go from like early childhood development to like natives in the law, like um, like number four is Jordan's principle, and it comes from somebody that fucking committed suicide in Thunder Bay because they're taken away from their family and they're I, like I don't know what they're like I read about it in a different book, right? But like, um, it's 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 getting its day right now. It's Black Lives Matter. It's Truth and Reconciliation. It's Orange Shirt Day in Canada, right? Yeah. Like, like we're getting that reckoning where we're actually bringing back Native culture, right? Yeah. We're, we're realizing that, like, you know, like, oh, well, fuck, I got a giant teepee in my yard, right? Yeah. I'm building an igloo. It just goes in a spiral. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? But like, like I've always um, entertained those principles, right? Because they're about living like within nature, right? Yeah. Mm. So, you know, like you you put the door to your teepee to the east, so you get the sunrise in the morning, right? There's 13 poles; they're all significant for something, right? Um, you know, like it's. It's fucking big stuff right now, right? And uh, you, you think like um, they've been colonized by um, maybe Roman Catholic culture or Western ideologies uh, throughout the generations, and it's kind of spoiled things. Is that what you feel like that uh, modern culture? Like this is this is almost it's not modern culture. It's like 
Yeah, it's but taking uh, away all the children from the village. Yeah, yeah. Every year in September. Yeah. The Indian agent shows up and all the children have to leave and they're gone 200 miles away. That's not right. right? And then they're, hey, some made out fine. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some of them learn mathematics and, and English and, you know, excelled at it. Right. Mm. But they lost the ability to know how to cook bannock and pemmican and, and hunt, a, hunt a grouse and like, you know what I mean? Like, like, like build a lean to and, and you know what I mean? And, and, and know which plants are edible, right? Mm. Like, like all that stuff is lost and, and it was replaced with whiskey, right? You know, instant satisfaction right now, right? And so of course there's alcoholism in, in, in native cultures, right? Yeah. Because, you know, like, but they, they weren't they weren't used to it like they didn't have access to it over generations and generations as well so it was just introduced overnight like suddenly as a as a new thing but it's a coping mechanism yeah right uh, it's a, a easy way to like like feel good right what you really need to do is 200 push-ups a day yeah right if you really want to feel good right like you know, but uh, yeah, I can get that in a bottle instead. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, two, 200 push-ups and, and 20 miles, like walk, walk 20 miles and... Uh, I think I'll have a beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to continue with my, my second cup of tea. This is from... Uh, Cheers. This is from um, Vailmount. It's got a beaver. Um, right? <laughs> this, this is where, uh, where I want to put the taxi. There's a little brewery that opened up right, in, right on Main Street. Yeah. It's um, mm. Three Ranges Brewing. This is an award-winning IPA. And it's got the beaver. The beaver nice. is my, my, the uh, beaver's my favorite uh, animal. My, my mate, Andy, um, who lives down in Essex in not near Brentwood, um, he... Uh, he loves like IPA and beers like that and like fruit beers. And he has, um, he has like a man shed, um, out in his back garden. It's like, um, like a fabricated building, uh, kind of better than a shed, you know, you sleep in it and it's got his office and stuff in there and all of, all of the, the roof, like the ceiling, when you look up, uh, in between the wood, like, you know, the wooden rafters, he's just, can after can after can after can of like empty cans of like colorful um you know the patterns like you've got the beaver on your can there all yeah. facing all facing downwards so you you can see like the, what like a couple of hundred or you know half a you know 500 like designs of different cans like every single can is unique yeah. that's up there yeah it's awesome my much older brother has his basement set up like that there's like you know, he's got, I don't know, so many, he's got antique stuff, right? A mm. L- little bit of cowboy kind of feel. And then he's got a whole bunch of empty, empty, you know, Pepsi and beer cans and so on, right? Yeah. He's a lot older. He just, he's retired now. You know, um, um... so uh, we should, we should get this on your, uh, on I'll, your friend's I'll... wall. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. You should, you should, uh, we should do it. You should, you should pay for it. You yeah, should I'll pay pa- for the beer and the shipping, and I'll send it to you next cool. time I'm in Villa. I'll send you six pack or one. What, what do you want? One beer or six? Whatever. Pack? I mean, how, how much would it cost? Do you think to send one or six pack or something? From... I don't remember how much was that envelope I sent you. I don't think it was too much, was it? Yeah, it wasn't. wasn't I think. That much. I think what we really should do is I should send you a beaver pelt. Yeah. Right. Okay. We should, we should get that fur com- fur trading company going. I, I hear I hear Hudson Bay is actually out of the fur trading business now, so like like it's free market to us. I I guess <laughs> I don't know if there's a market. Um, please well, you make hats the, with it. We could yeah, hats. Yeah. It's, it's the it's the oldest rage rave in London. You yeah. can totally bring that back. You reckon? Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah, you like if if there was like a nice hat shop. That had a like legitimate beaver pelt hat. Yeah, made like they used to make them. That would fetch some money, right? Yeah, like yeah. eighty pounds a hat. I don't know. Yeah, easily. Right? That, yeah. that seems that seems cheap for London. Right. Okay. Well, it's two hundred eighty pounds then. 
Yeah. Right? That seems more like it. Yeah. We have a we have a coyote problem here in Fort Saskatchewan, right? Yeah. All across America as well. You you know, do you know the reason why? Um, like um, I heard this on the Joe Rogan podcast. There was a, a coyote specialist came on uh, about a year ago or something. He, he he explained it. So basically, the more that they're killed, the more they breed, and the faster they breed, and the howling that they do at night, they're like cl- they're calling out to say, uh, you know, oh Fred, Fred, where are you, Fred? And Fred doesn't reply. So like, oh shit, we've lost Fred. Quick, let's make another Fred. And then instead of, you know, they can't just replace Fred with one uh, coyote. They come out in litters, don't they? So every time they lose one, they produce more and more and more. And that's why they're everywhere now. They were, huh. they were, they were only sort of regional, weren't they, at one point? Or, you know, not, not as bad as they are now. But as well, you, well, they don't fear humans, so they don't mind yeah. being, they don't, so they get to eat garbage and stuff like that too, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, but last year was kind of a mild winter, so there's a lot of rabbits around, so there's a lot of food for them. Mm, delicious. <laughs> yeah. um, I was thinking about maybe guy becomes a coyote whisperer. Okay. Oh, oh! <laughs> but there was, uh, there was that guy, uh, Grizzly Man. Have you seen that documentary about that guy? I think he was from like your neck of the woods, and he kept going up to Alaska, and um, he, he like befriended uh, a fox, a coyote, an owl, like all these different animals. He'd go there every single year and he befriended these bears. And, you know, he had a couple of good seasons up there. But then, you know, spoiler alert, he ran into the wrong bear and was eaten like on camcorder. Well, that's and how then, close he got. He was able to, be, like, he was so close to those bears yeah. that he was able to feed them yeah, with yeah. his own flesh and blood. That's like yeah. that. You don't become closer than that. <laughs> Yeah, do you think he became that, that like, might be that that may have been his heaven? Yeah, yeah. So um we went out for a walk, me and my family, right? On whatever one of those days when it was cold, right? And I grabbed my stereo and I I, I pulled out the song We Whistle While We Work, right? Yeah. <laughs> and my family was like, Don't break that, right? So we went without it. Oh. Right? So then uh I was driving back from Prince George to McBride, which is a high mountain road. And it had snowed, oh, I don't know, like 20 centimeters before Christmas. And then, um, and then it was quite cold, right? So it was really pretty. And I set up my camera on the dash of the truck and I played my music, but it was just what was loaded on Spotify last. So it's like Snow White, like <laughs> um, talking to like the birds and telling them that, that she needs yeah. a place to stay. And, and um, it's a 38 minute like audio clip. And I made four of those videos. Okay. Right? And then, um, and then I tuck my phone into the seats on the, uh, on the the uh, bus going across Ontario, right, and recorded out the front window, and I was going to try and take. Well, there's more footage than that, right? I was yeah. going to try and take all this footage and kind of try and copy the Norwegian train, right? I don't know if I'm allowed to have music. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But like, I don't know. So have you got uh, loads of um, have you got loads of um, video from your from your trip that you could share with me that I could make into a montage? Because I'd love to do that. How do I share it? Um, we can. Th- there's a there's a link to a site I can send you, and we can we can share it, um, or I can give you access to like my Dropbox or something like that, or you can send it to me over WhatsApp. Can you make the video? Can you yeah, do the, can... yeah, I'll make yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, of course I will. I'll put yeah. mu- I'll put music over it. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. So you can get permission for stuff, some stuff. Um, yeah, you there is um, there's music available, uh, which is normally the stuff that I use at the beginning of my episodes or at the end of the episodes. And but I, I already had like it's already playing music because I was playing Spotify okay. while I was recording with the other phone. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hmm. Yeah, because what I'd have to do then in that case is um, I might have to mute the audio from the video and overlay a different set of music. 
because if what it's... if we what if we searched out to see if they're okay? Yeah, for each particular song, and then this was an idea that I thought up in uh, in Montreal. What if we just took the audio and like stretched it, changed okay. the pitch? You know what I mean? Like, like just just fuck with the song enough mm. that um, Shazam doesn't pick it up anymore. Yeah. Well, it's. Maybe. I mean, it, it depends. It's like the it's the the YouTube algorithm, isn't it? So, if um, like say if you're you're uploading your montage to YouTube or whatever, um, it might say, "Oh, copyrighted material found," um, and yeah. it'll encourage you to edit it out. So it's always better to do that beforehand, and that's right. why I get those royalty free tracks, um, and then apply those. So, you can, so can I get that off Spotify? Royalty free. Um, so, I can, so, I can play, so I can just play music on Spotify, and then I can find the songs I like. No, I'll give you, I'll give you a link now in the chat. Um, um, can you can you send it to me? Can you send it to my message instead? Yeah, 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 sure thing. No worries. Freemusicarchives.org. Yeah, but like the thing is, I use Spotify all the time. So, like, uh, is there an app for that? No, no, there's no app for that. So, like you the way I do it is I, I download those tracks um, and then I, I use a thing called uh, DaVinci Resolve and that's how I make my videos. Um, so I, I add the track and I add the images or I add the video and then I overlay the track. Um, so if you imagine like different layers of things and I put the, the track on there and then if there's any audio audio on a video that I don't want, then I just mute, mute that. Um, so yeah, that, that's how I do it. Sweet. Slow TV. That's what I'm hoping for here. Slow TV. Slow TV. What's slow TV? Well, it's the it's Norway Norway train. Norway train, okay. Have you heard it? No, I think it? so. No. Um, it's a camera set up in the cockpit of the train going across Norway. Oh wow, okay, that sounds cool. And yeah. the windshield wipers are cleaning the window. Yeah. I'll and check that out. It, it walks and goes through tunnels, and you can see houses and horses. And yeah, it's about six hours long. Nice. Right? Yeah. Just like so, one of our uh, podcasts. <laughs> yeah, so, long. so I watched it before, right? And we were planning it on Christmas Eve or something like that. Yeah. Right. And so I was like, God, that's that's what I'm going to do, right? And so, like, I was so stoked to get on the bus to be able to, like, like, like I got it. Oh, man. Uh, I waved down the bus. I bought a bus ticket. Yeah. They told me it was sold out. I called them up and I'm like, hey, can I get an emergency ticket? Right? Yeah. <laughs> COVID, there's room, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was able to buy a bus ticket. I got them my visa number. My phone died. Right? So I, I positioned my bag and I walked towards where the bus was coming from. Yeah. And I waved them down. Um, And she stopped past my bag and I, I ran and grabbed my bag. I, I had I'd put my bag on a, on a hand cart. Right. And then I'd added a third wheel to the hand cart so I could just pull yeah. it along. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and and uh, you had some sort of sign on this hand cart as well, right? Well, it was the, the sign was where I was going. It was it was hitchhiking it. All right. Okay. It was I... Espanola. But it basically said, I speak Spanish. Okay. Right? Espanola, right? That, like that's what most people would see it, right? I, I thought I thought it said let's go, Brandon. Oh. No, it, it's like the girl lives in Espanola, right? Yeah. So when I was in Ottawa, I was like, Well, I changed my flight from Toronto to Ottawa, fly out of Ottawa, and I'll fly home, right? And Air Canada switched it up. I grabbed all my bags and I went up to the Ottawa airport and I stayed there for the night because I was a little bit wet from staying the other night, right? Yeah. And uh, um, security didn't like where I was staying, so they moved me to somewhere else, right? Which is great. And uh, um, in the morning, I looked at the weather and I was like, okay, it's like minus 10 here. It's minus 30 in Alberta. I don't have to be back for anything. Yeah. Right. So I canceled my flight, hopped on the buses in Ottawa. 
I went as far as I could on the buses and I started walking and then um, I went up to the, to the road and like hitchhiked and then the cops came and I was like, are you allowed to hitchhike? He's like, nah. Like, oh, okay. So then he got my ID and he ran my name and yeah. uh, um, he drove me to the next little transit center, right? We loaded all my stuff into his, into his car and we drove me to the next transit center. So then I took that bus further, right? Well, why aren't you allowed and to hitchhike? And then like, hey? Eh? Why aren't you allowed? A, yeah. Dangerous. It's a double lane freeway going. It's like it's, it's not a good spot to hitchhike. Okay. okay. Right. Yeah. So, so you would so, be, but just not on that road. Like you, you nobody was going to pick me up there. It's, yeah, it's way yeah. too fast, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, so then, like, you know, uh, so I, I got off at the, the the coffee store, right, and I tied my bag to a post. And I walked up to my bank and got some money out of my bank, right? And there was a dollar store there. So I went to the dollar store and I got like a piece of corplast. And I got some fake flowers to stuff into it. And I got some chocolate and some Gatorade and some stuff like that, right? But I decked out the sign. And I got a big fat marker and whatever, right? Yeah. And then I went back to the coffee store, Tim Hortons, right? That's the only thing we drink in Canada. <laughs> um, and... I seen somebody going through the drive-thru and I was like, hey man, do you know where Espinola is? And he was like, yeah. I'm like, so if I write Espinola on my sign, like people will know? And he's like, yeah. Okay, cool. Right? Yeah. So, so I made my sign and I continued on my, you know, journey on foot and I kind of got to the edge of town. Right? Like there was a McDonald's and then it was like, you know, no more stores, no more houses, whatever. Right? Yeah. So I stocked up on everything I needed there. Right, like, whatever. There's a couple shops and stuff, right? And that guy showed up, the guy from the drive-through. He's like, "You haven't made it very far, have you?" Right? <laughs> like, you know, because honestly, I made it like what a kilometer. Yeah. You know. And uh, so, um, yeah, we we loaded my bags and stuff in his car and truck, and he lives out in the country. So he drove me to the next little town, hmm. right? So. His place or whatever, it, you know, and then he drove me another 20 minutes to that place and we found a spot to get me out to the highway and it had gas stations and there was a motel and I went and hitchhiked the motel, like there for a while, right? And then I left my bag out the highway, went into town. Uh, <laughs> I grabbed a sign from town that said, uh, a butter tart sold here, right? And I, and I took it back out to the highway and I, and I put it in a position so it's going to stay there. Yeah. So whenever somebody's driving by this little town on the highway, they're going to see butter tarts sold there. Right? <laughs> it's like an advertising for the full town, right? Uh, so then I got back out to the thing. It was getting later. Uh, I was like, I had enough of this. I'm going to go stay at that motel. And then uh, another cop came by. And he said, I'm not allowed to hitchhike on that side of the median. I can hitchhike on the like on the inside on the ramp going on, but I can't yeah. hitchhike on the other side, right? Okay. I told him I was done for the night, right? And so I pulled my bag, went to the motel, stayed in the motel for the night. Uh morning, I got up and I like tried to make my bag work better. There was a better product that I should have bought, but I didn't. And so I went out to the highway with my bags and I was like, man, I got to get more supplies, right? So I took my stuff out of my bags, but my bag, right? So yeah. that, so that I didn't have to hide it and I didn't have to take it with me. And if somebody came along, it would be an effort for them to, because they'd have to pick everything up, right? Yeah. So, so I went in town, I come back and there's a police car there with his lights on. I'm like, ah, oh, right. So um, I left my bag open, so he went into my shaving kit and he grabbed my prescription pill bottle and got my name, right? Okay. And he asked for my ID, right? And uh, he uh, he was going to give me a ride to the next ramp or whatever, right? And he's like, you know what? I'll just give you a ride to Renfrew, right? I'm like, yeah, right? <laughs> next town, right? So he gave me a ride to Renfrew, and he took me to the bus station, and the bus was there. It passed us when he was loading me up, right? Yeah. But it was sold out, right? Like, we talked to the bus driver. 
And then he left me and so did the bus. And so I walked like across town in Renfrew. I went to the home to the hardware store there and I bought a hand cart, a dolly, right? Okay. <laughs> and then I like skidded the dolly to Sandy's diner, right? And I went into Sandy's diner and had a bite to eat, and it seemed like a cool place. And I was like, "Hey, is that your truck outside?" He's like, "Yeah." Can you mean right out to the highway? Right? <laughs> like, I don't like. I want to hitchhike. I don't want to walk to the highway, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, I know. I, he, we we chatted for a bit, and he was like, "Yeah, I'll give you a ride," right? So he gave me a ride out to the highway. I hung out on like, like when we got to light. I got him to take me halfway down the hill to the bridge, like halfway. Uh, a big wide shoulder and like like I hung out there for a while and and then I walked down to the bridge and I went and got my stuff and I made a break for it and I went across the bridge with my bags which like there's no shoulder right the ambulance came the other way right then I got to the other side and there's like an extra lane for going like for passing people going up the hill so I pulled my bag up the other side and I got to the light on the other side and there was another cop there, hmm. right? And he was like, how would you like, how would you like a hotel room for the night? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we loaded my stuff up and the OPP bought me a hotel room, right? And so I went and stayed at the hotel. And then in the morning, I took my little hand cart to the gas station, filled it up with air, went over to the hardware store, bought another wheel for it, went back, I had tools, right? So, like, the little, the extra arm on the hand cart had worn flat. So I filled that full of hot glue and, like, <laughs> put a piece of wood on there and, like, duct tape that all together and then added the wheel. And then, like, you know, like, like the wheel even has a bearing, right? So it's pretty sweet. And then I headed out to the road. Um, the night before, I, like, like, met up with, like, four people hanging out in their vehicles in the parking lot. And they, uh, like, you know what I mean? Like, they recorded me saying some stuff for their social medias, right? <laughs> and they do this thing where they, they over-rev their car, right? And it goes, bum, 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 yeah. bum, 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 right? <laughs> Rev limit, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, like, when I was headed out to the highway that next day, the guy went by me and he, he rev-limited his car, right? <laughs> right? It was beauty. So I hung out at the highway for a couple hours around noon, it's pretty sweet. Add some shrimp, add some beer, right? Waved to people, got some truckers to honk. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, okay, <laughs> enough of this. So I went back into town and uh, I picked out the other hotel, motel, right? On the other side of town. <coughs> and I walked across town with my little bag and I stopped at the thrift store and I stopped at the, the, um, you know, in the mechanic shop and I, you know, and, and the power station and like, you know, the power utility since 1910. And then they have a, a hydro station there. And like, like I got snow rent free. Right. And then I got yeah. to the, to the motel on the far side in time for the restaurant to close at 7 PM. And I got my room and went and bought some of their takeout. Um, you're not allowed to dine in as of then. Right. <laughs> I was the only one staying in the motel. They're not open for business anymore, right? There's a new <laughs> hotel in town. Their their place is old. My bathtub didn't work, right? Yeah, yeah. I got it. Whatever. I needed to get on the road, mm. so I had a taxi take me in the morning, and I made it to the road at six thirty, six fifteen a.m. It was minus twenty two, and uh, I hung out at the light for a bit. Another cop came. And told me I can't keep my bag there and move it over to the shoulder a little bit more. So I obliged, right? Yeah. And then, uh, you know, when it got a little bit more light, I started heading down the road. I probably walked, uh, what, 10 kilometers or so, right? And then I was, another cop stopped, right? And uh, we traded business cards. Okay. Right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, like we chatted a little bit. And, and then he got a call, like on the radio or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so I was able to get a TikTok, right? And then when he came back at me, he said, oh, sorry about that. I was like, no, no, man. 
That was great. <laughs> I got the talk out of that. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, then I waved down the bus. And then I was going to, like, like my phone died, but then it like, started back up. I was going to yeah. call him so he can show up with his lights to help me get okay. on the bus. Yeah. But bus doesn't know how to pick people up on the side of the highway, right? So, yeah, so I hopped on the bus. I had my ticket to North Bay, and then I just got another ticket from North Bay to Sudbury. Uh, Carrie came and picked me up, spent the night at her house. Um, we were going to go for a walk, but the weather is shitty. So I called Via, and they were like, yeah, the train's today at 5 p.m., 4, 4.57, right? And the next train's next week, a week later, right? And I was like, well, I got to go today, right? Mm. So... Carrie wanted a altar so that she could keep her um, witch and stuff, her candles and things like that, right? So um, we, you know, I, I like designed something, drew something on a piece of paper, whatever, and and she's like, I don't want to go to the hardware store. We'll just go to my dad's. So we went to her dad's, and like he's got a house that he built himself, and it's attached to a shop that has like. A bunch of equipment in it that's attached to another shop. It's a wood shop that used to be like that's where he lived in eventually at first. Yeah. So there's some like wood paneling that had been wet. Right. He's like, you can use this, but you'd have to cut this off and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. And then I, I swapped out like these like blocks of wood that were like that thick by the size of a piece of paper ish. Right. So yeah, we like designed it on the table. <laughs> he gave me the, the screws for it, right? I have all the tools to put it together. Yeah. Right. So he just gave me the screws and the wood, and then I actually got a like a video call from my family. So that was, you know, I took the wood out to the to the car, and uh, Carrie said goodbye to her dad, and then we like went back and built this thing, right? And so we'd planned it out that we leave at I don't know three. Right, 45 minutes and 45 minutes to get there. And oh, well, we weren't done yet, right? So I just kept on working on it. Carrie drives fast, yeah. right? <laughs> I got to the train and it was moving from the front of the train being at the station to the back of the train being at the station. And like, yeah, I got on and then they like walked me up to the front from first class to economy. And then at the next stop, I was able to go back and get my bags and like put bags on them and stuff like that. Like a minute to spare, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, yeah, it was sweet. I was on the train, right? Like uh, they told me, okay, don't leave the car, right? There's two bathrooms on board, but like yeah. your spot's your seat. Stay in your seat, right? Omicron. Yeah, yeah. So, um. I have my thermos, the old thermos. This thing has done me well. Best three dollars I've ever spent. And so when you when you got on the on the train at the end, that was your train ride home. Well, I booked a ticket from Sudbury to Winnipeg, and I was going to fly from Winnipeg. But then I was like thinking, like, okay, I get into Winnipeg. It's in the evening. Now I gotta like take a taxi. To the airport. Oh, there's no flights. Then I gotta take a taxi to a hotel and then go to the airport. Right? Nah. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, like, I hung out in the Winnipeg um, area downtown. It was cold. It's, Winnipeg's always cold, though, right? Winter Peg, they call it. And uh, Winter Peg is coming. Yeah. So, I, I hung out with the guy that works in film, right? Like, as a setup guy or something like that. No, we had a bite to eat and a beer, and then uh, we went to the park downtown, the Forks Park, and we got to the train station and got on board the train, and there was a problem with the train, so we stayed there for like four or five hours, so I got my sleep in, yeah. right? <laughs> and then we left early in the morning, and like, yeah, staring out the window, loving it, right? And they, they fill up my coffee like three or five times a day. Charge me double the price of everybody else's, and then I have <laughs> coffee, and then like I don't have to wear my mask because I'm eating or drinking. Yeah. Right? yeah. But every time they come by, I gotta put my mask on. But like, there's only three people within my six feet, right? So 
Plus, we're all vaccinated. You have to be vaccinated, double vaccinated for trains and planes in Canada, but buses you don't, right? But they're also bringing in truck drivers crossing the border have to be vaccinated. Hmm. I think that just came in. Big protest next Sunday. Yeah, I mean, how, how, how are they going to work that? Is that not going to make everything slower? Like, um, you know, what most goods that are going to stores are, are based on a just-in-time delivery. So any sort of holdup by checking drivers' vaccination status, you know, would it not just be easy to say to the drivers... It's a delay. It's another fucking 20-minute delay unless yeah. there's a lineup, right? Yeah. Just, just yeah. stay in the cab. Like, would that not be easier? So uh, uh, we have a two-lane bridge. We're building a, 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 a twin to it right now, coming into Fort Saskatchewan. So next Sunday at noon is the day the truckers are supposed to just, like, stop, you know, shut her down, right? So yeah. I'm going to go out to the bridge next Sunday at noon and did you, park did on you the watch, bridge. Yeah, I was going to say, did you just, watch... Just hang um, out there with my slow sign. <laughs> did you watch... Um, Jordan? Do you know who Jordan Peterson is? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, he he wrote. Um, or he's he, the feminist, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he made um, he made a video recently. Um, I think it was called "Time to Live," and you know, it basically it's like a ten minute video. He, he's talking about the situation in Canada, and he's saying, you know, enough is enough. Like it's time to get back to you know business as usual because you know you, you can you can protect people you know in whatever way you like but surely don't do it at the cost of all of these other systems that have worked perfectly for decades <laughs> like you're gonna i came everything. up with the saying of bring on the omicron and i put it on my mask yeah right and then like and like when that cop was like with the guy that i traded business cards with i'd flip my sign over because i it said i speak spanish right and i just wrote fuck covid yeah right? <laughs> They didn't, the, the train didn't let me have that sign on board, though. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah, which is fine. It was, good. it was a good spot for it to leave. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the sign that I saw that, you know, it was either let's go Brandon or something else, but that's the one. Yeah. Um, so Quebec, the province of Quebec tried, I don't know what the status of it, but they're, um, they're going to find people who aren't vaccinated. Okay. But how, so, how, yeah, are, are the people that aren't vaccinated a financial drain on the health care health health care system? Hey, what happened to our tent? Why haven't we built that yet? Uh, Fuck, we should have got it done. We could have had it ready for Omicron because it was too expensive, wasn't it? It was. Did you get a price? Yeah, I sent it to you. Do you not remember? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't open it. Oh, uh, right. Okay. Yeah, it was like. I think it was like a million or it was more. It was a lot. Like it was, it was too much. It was oh, yeah. too much money. Yeah. It was crazy oh. money. So. Yeah. So I wasn't able to send the postcards to my mayor and city councilor that was pictures of New York and say, this is how the pros do it. Yeah. Yeah. So I traveled across Canada and I looked at our leadership and I realized we don't have any pros right now. It's tough. It's a tough scene, right? So a lot of division, right? A lot of opinions, a lot of repeating news, right? This is what I heard here, right? I just told you about the, the fines in Montreal, right? You just told me about John, Jordan Peters. You know what I mean? There's, there's so much yeah. to, to talk about, to hear, to say, right? So, yeah, so I got home and I, and I went and got my booster shot, right? What else do you do? Right? Bring on the Omicron. Like, <laughs> let's get, let's fuck go. Let's, let's do this. Let's, you know what? I, I, I want to do Trans-Siberian train, like, in six months. Right? Like, I want to go back down to Panama. Like I, like, I don't fucking care about this thing. I'll get sick. I'll die, maybe. Who cares? Right? Like, like Jordan said, like, it's time to live. Yeah. 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 So, we've... We've given society a way to protect themselves, right? Those who choose to do it, do it, right? You know, like, like you can isolate yourself still, right? 
Yeah. And those who don't, no. you know, that's their choice, isn't it? And that, that's freedom. Yeah. Do, do we believe in freedom or not? Like, you know, I do. I think that COVID mandates worked, right? Threats worked. All that stuff. Truckers went out and got a bunch of vaccines recently because of this rule, right? There's some companies in Montreal that offered a $10,000 bonus if you got your vaccines, right? But my roommate, he's not doing it. He's not, he's, but he's unemployed, right? Because he can't yeah. fucking, right? So he's making that choice, right? I like that. I didn't get my vaccine passport until I was ready to go traveling, right? No restaurants, no hockey game, you know, because I was trying to support the people that didn't, right? I wanted mine. I want mine. Like, I, like, I want my vaccine, right? Sorry. Salute. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I like that. In Spanish, it's salute to health, right? So when you sneeze, it's salute and salute. Nice. Whew. So... Something just got me. Uh, maybe, maybe it's the un- Omicron. <laughs> right. Oh, man, you, you seem... Um, so I, I had some of my political I, cards to give out along the way? Yeah, I was going to say, like, before you move on to that, like, when you talk about this, you seem like, you know, it's upsetting you, like, the, the fact that you don't have your freedom. No, I don't care. I have but, my freedom. Yeah. I have my freedom. When they walk past me, I put my mask on and they come by, hey, you have to wear a mask, right? That's fine. You know, sometimes I go into stores and, and they have their little plastic shield up and I'm like, oh, I didn't bring my mask. Normally I do, right? But she's like, it doesn't matter. You're not coming back here, right? You know? And then like, I don't know. Uh, I thought I thought that virus, I thought that vaccine protected me from fucking getting it. It doesn't. Right. So whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting stuff though, eh? But like, we sure haven't avoided it like the plague. Right. You know, like, had we not done March 2020 lockdown? Yeah. Could we have experienced a death toll like Spanish flu? That's my thoughts. Right? I don't know. I don't know. Like my friend Shola, she's on 14 days of COVID. She says she hadn't eaten for a week during that. Right? Like, that sucks. Right? My four hours of, of fever and chills, whatever, it's over, right? Yeah. Like, like for me, I think I spent a um, few, few days in bed. Um, it was pr- pretty, pretty ill not much of an appetite um one of the days i lost um, my sense of taste and smell um but I, I could still taste um really sweet things like so anything like if i had a bit of chocolate like to try and pep me up i could still taste that like in the back of my mouth uh, it could, and, it, and it tasted sweeter than normal as well which was weird um right. yeah um well because like finally you had something that that gave you taste yeah. So it's it more be. sensational, maybe. Yeah, I mean that only that only lasted a day. Like I I've, I know other people have said that the lack of uh, taste and smell has has gone on for uh, for a long time. Mm. But yeah, for for me it was only like a about a day, um, and yeah, I I felt a bit. I, I had dizzy spells, um, and sort of feeling really tired, like needing a a nap or an afternoon nap. But, you know, I, I just turned 40 as well, so it could be that. <laughs> right. Right. It, it hey, I'm going to grab some power for my phone here. Okay. We'll be back in uh, 38 okay. seconds. Um, big news, Paul. Yeah. Valerie has moved out. Did she leave you a note? No, she was. She got in a bite. She she was the one at the door. 
at the beginning of our conversation. Oh, okay. She didn't, she didn't make the coffee. She had a bicycle here. And uh, yeah. she, uh, she, she didn't stay for 8 o'clock breakfast like I planned with everybody. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Hmm. So she... Uh, so maybe that was her she got, trying to... She got some rest. She got some to eat. She got to organize her stuff and uh, yeah. going back to wherever she... You know what I mean? She knows how to do it, right? Yeah. Mm. Um, so uh, I think she's pretty good at not listening to people, right? Mm. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's like like from the instructions that I gave her, she didn't accomplish what I said, right? Mm. Um, and uh, that's good. Uh, obviously, she felt you know she may have got her first levels of the hierarchy of needs but she wasn't getting her emotional levels yeah right? yeah like um so the first one is uh physiological and then the next one is safety and then um love and belonging and yeah she then, probably didn't get the love and belonging yeah yeah and that's where we fell short yeah. You gave her safety. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, uh, th you know, that's why they're they're the foundation of the pyramid, you know, right. because they're they're the most important, aren't they? Um and then on top of love you have esteem, and then above that you have self actualization, which is um self actualization. Yeah, it's um you know, growth. You can look at yourself and you can reflect and you can think, right, what is it that I that I want to do now? Um and not not everybody can do that. Not even people who, who have all of the other four things. Well, I'm glad that uh, I was there to provide the first one. Yeah. Yeah, you did more than me. <laughs> I did, you, you know, the, the, the golfing girl, uh, you know, I didn't, didn't even get that far. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, you probably got another 40 years to give it another shot, eh? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, Maybe you need a sign that says uh, wanted homeless person to help. I want to get to level four of, uh, sorry, who's who's the hierarchy? Uh, needs? Maslow. Maslow, yeah. Uh, I'd like to reach level four of helping somebody. <laughs> you want to help uh, give somebody back their esteem. Mm -hmm. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like, like, um, Somebody building confidence from being able to uh, building skills, building skills from sorry, building confidence from building skills. <clears throat> yeah, it's um, it's tricky, isn't it? Because like, even if um, even if she was good at listening, it's like it's difficult. You don't know what she's been through in the time that she's been on the street, so. It's just there's probably a lot to unpack there. Well, I don't, I don't need to hear those stories either. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you're like, not, like you're I, not. I, one thing like that I don't want to hear is your crisis story. Yeah. In the first hour of knowing you, right. There's a big red flag, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, I can't believe that guy told me about his, his, jail term like 10 years later yeah yeah right like and that was you know what i mean that was within i, I don't know I, I probably he probably opened up to me more than you know what i mean because like we were buds right we hung out for the whole evening right he even showed me where he lived right it was kind of sweet i actually used his house to store food the next day <laughs> i was going to give it to him but yeah i just stored it there right I got a, a corned beef sandwich made, right? At one of the little shops in Montreal. Yeah. What's so the, then I set my what's camera up. What's beef like over there? So uh, it, was, it was good. Mm. So then I set my camera up and I recorded myself eating it. And then I talked to the cook and then I set my camera up and I recorded him making it, right? And then I was like, and then I, I, I paid for both sandwiches and they're like, oh, really? 
right? Like they would they would have just given it to the next person, right? But I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like I, I'm gonna use that footage. I want to make money on it, right? Maybe not, but whatever. So I was gonna give him that sandwich, but then I want that sandwich, right? It's good. He didn't. He didn't really want it. He wanted. He wanted our company, right? You know, he wanted yeah. to see me again. Yeah. Did you um, just out of interest? <laughs> did Did you check your nice tool bag? Is it still there? I'm not worried. You're not worried. I'm, I'm really not. Yeah. I have a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, the keys to my vehicles are in them, and that's where they stay. Uh, I had. Um. Look, I had something stored in that cupboard. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go get the door. Can you pause it? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, pause this. Pause it now. Okay. Pause. There we go. Motivation increases. Motivation increases as need is met. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the more that you fulfill these, the more this happens. Mm. I'm, I'm up there at the top, right? Yeah, for sure. I, yeah, like I, I love, but man, like after I got home and I had a house full of um, people that needed a place to live, right? Like, like on Wednesday, I had four roommates not paying rent. Right? <laughs> no, it's, it's beautiful, right? Like, like the, that's great to be able to do that. To be in a position to do that. Yeah, right? to to be able to, um, yeah, definitely to be able to be in a position where you can help other people, um, and also not feel worried at all about your own property or you know your you know your own sort of area yeah. or you know and and to have the confidence to be able to say um no nah, I'm, I'm good right now i don't want to speak to you right now or, or you know or go down there or you know this is my space do one um you know that's yeah. that's something as well yeah but like all the snow was shoveled right i just thought you know what i mean there's like it came back my parking spot was empty snow was shoveled the garage was clean Came into the garage, I was hanging out in the garage for a couple hours, and I was like, ah, fuck, I got a nice place. Yeah. Right? You know, because, like, I built this building. You know, like, every screw I put in, right? Like, it's been, I don't know, the half of the nine years that I've been here, right? It is my man cave, right? I got, you know, like, um, I had to do this little survey, like, well, where do you see the, the city in 50 years, right? Well, I see this building standing in 50 years from now, right? Um, I'm putting in some flooring down in the basement that I got from my brother. I was thinking about it this morning. I was like, I should make a time capsule and put it under there. Okay. And I, would... I should, like, publicize the time capsule so yeah, it's not what... just me putting stuff in it. What would you put inside it? What would you put inside it? What would I put right? inside it? Um... I'll put this beer inside of it. Right? Yeah, I put, like a, I, in, I put like right? a picture a picture of my family and like a note to future us. Yeah, something like that. But I have a following, right? You know, 293 votes in the federal election. Yeah. Right? Uh, people following me at Facebook. Facebook wants to give me money, I think. They want my ID. Right? So why not like... Like, why not put other people's stuff in my time capsule? Yeah. Right? And then, you know what I mean? Then I'm making history. Have you seen um, that film? Uh, is it The Knowing? Is it Nicolas Cage? Who's in there? Or I can't remember, but um, same thing. There's a time capsule. 50 years later, it's open. There's a bit of paper that comes out of it, and it's basically just got loads of numbers on it. And these numbers are actually dates of um, major incidents like uh, 9-11 and stuff like that on it. Um, and there's about eight or ten dates still remaining um, on the bit of paper. Um, so, like, he's a scientist and he, he figures it out. He figures out what's going on. 
and then um, he's trying to prevent the these events from happening. Um, but it's uh, it's good. It's a good film. If you haven't seen it, I think I have seen it. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah. So, have you seen any films by John Candy? Oh yeah, <clears throat> have um, you seen uh, Eating Bacon? Yeah, yeah, a long time yeah. ago. Yeah. So that's why I wrote the bilingual on my mask because they had to spray paint the, you know, they wrote all these like slurs against Canada and then they got pulled over <laughs> in Quebec and they had to put them in French as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he also made a film called uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I've been yeah. saying that for the last two weeks, right? Because that's what I did, right? Yeah, yeah. But I've never watched the movie. You've never seen it. I was, very heartwarming film. Um, well, I will yeah, be watching it soon. I, I watched Don't Look Up instead. Okay. I didn't like it. It was okay. Yeah. So um, so I got the giant pumpkin this year. I bought a pumpkin for lots of money. Right? Yeah, I, I remember. Have you still got it? Or yeah. is it what, what's happened to well, it? Well, it, it froze, right? And it's okay. certain rot and, and so on, right? So I knocked a hole in the top and yeah. pulled all the guts out for a minute. Yeah. And separated the seeds and put them on wax paper and turned them three times a day for the first two days. And now I have these, um, they're huge. These seeds. Wow. Yeah. So I, I was going to give some to my uh, campaign manager, right? So I, I just put them in the envelope that I was going to mail to him. But then I didn't get it mailed to him, right? And so, so I had these I had these seeds with me when I was over in the East Coast there. Yeah. Right. So I planted the seed along my journey, right? And like I did it over Christmas too when I went to Prince George. I put them in little packs of three in an envelope, and I yeah. wrote "Magic Beanstalk" or whatever on. It, right. Like if you do it right, you can grow a five hundred pound pumpkin. Right. And like. So, you know, so I wasn't able to drop this as a, as a publicity stunt. Yeah. Like I got a much better gift of, of the seed. Right? So who, who did you give the seed to? Like, where did you put the envelopes? You just dropped them through people's doors or? No, like the, the gas station attendant in Hinton. Yeah. Uh, the girl working at the liquor store in Edson. Yeah. Right. Uh, the guy that pulled me out of the ditch. Right. Uh, I gave him a couple, um, a couple people in Dunster, um, my family, like, except for my mom and stepdad, because, um, like they grow pumpkin. So I'll send them some seeds, right. I don't need to give them the little three packs. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, I need to send them like, you know, I need to give them like 20 or 30 seeds because they're going to, right. Now they're going to have giant pumpkins to sell next fall. Right. <laughs> um, I planted one the other day. Yeah, so you're, start now. so you're going to have right? one. Yeah. Uh, I talked to the farmer that I bought this pumpkin from. Yeah. And he says it's it's hard work, right? Like you got to you put blankets on them and like, you <laughs> took, know, like. Took them in at night. <laughs> yeah, you got to you got to play them classical music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, man, like. Like, not like, like I planted both seeds, right? I planted the pumpkin seed across the country, but I also planted like uh, the the intellectual seed with the people that I met. Yeah. Right. It's like I come with a different view. Right. Yeah. The seed of love. Um, the seed of freedom. Yeah, but like with my whole like, I want a different political party, right? Because we've had the same political parties in Canada forever. Yeah. Right. So why can't we have a pumpkin party in four years from now? Yeah. And whatever that, so I'm going to set that up because I want to set up the rock party, but why don't I set up the pumpkin party too? Yeah. Right. And just, so I don't like, I don't want to govern it. Right. I want, I want the ideology to develop itself. Right. I don't want conservative and liberal and Republican and Democrat. Right. I want Paul and Jeremy. Right. I want, I want that voice, 
right? Yeah, like some, something new. Like I had a meeting with my member of parliament about COVID um, when I got back, right? And there was, you know, 12 to 15 people on the virtual round table, right? And I didn't really have anything to say, right? Because, I mean, if I could, but I, I spent so much time getting ready for it. Yeah. Like on the train, like reading about COVID, like I don't have any protests about it. Right. I found out that I like, I found out the virus, the vaccine doesn't protect me yeah. from getting the virus. That's what I found out. Right. Yeah. So what's the point of it? Well, I That's figure cool. one dose keeps you out of the hospital. One dose keeps you out of ICU. Two doses yeah. keep you out of the hospital. Three doses makes you stay home in bed for half the day. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, three three doses keeps your smell and taste, right? Yeah, that's I'm just that, that's a new one. I'm just throwing that out there, right? But like, like that's the point, right? Like, like when you get sick, how bad do you want it to be? Yeah, uh, as mild as possible, right? So you should have echinacea every day and and uh, lots of broccoli and get your vitamin D. Yeah, and, vitamin uh, D, vitamin C, C, iron. Vitamin B for energy absorption, happiness. Yeah. yeah. Wash that all down with a nice shot of whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's what I got from my member of parliament was his suggestion was vitamin D. Okay. Right. But, you know, and I repeated that back to him at the end of the night. And so I set my other phone up to record while I was in the meeting. Right. And I looked at it and the NDP candidate was watching me. Right. So I phoned him, right? Like afterwards, he's yeah. he's he, he's he's ran for the second time now, right? He's got to be about twenty three years old, right? He, you know, he doesn't have any experience, but um, when I questioned him on things, he he told me what the principles of the NDP party are. They're his thoughts, yeah, right. Like, this is how I think. I think because I'm an MVP, right? You know, like, I don't, I don't think we should think like that. I think we should switch our parliament up to have 340 individuals, not, yeah, yeah. A, not, not a majority party, right? Like, so I questioned my MP. I was like, well, can Quebec do that? Don't they have to put that through the legislator? Right? And he's like, well, no, they have a majority. And so who, that party that came up with that idea, they have a majority. So like when they, when they stick to their party profile, which is what they do because they're all trained to do that, now you get a fine for not getting a vaccine in Quebec because whatever party that is has a majority, Yeah. right? That guy up in the, the north half of Quebec City, he doesn't get to, to determine that. He's like, you know... Because he's right. Hey, um, my favorite prime minister was on TikTok, right? And so I commented on it, and I was like, "He's my favorite PM," right? <laughs> and so he liked that. And then I looked at it, and I was like, "Oh, that's him. It's his. <laughs> it's it's his like profile, right?" <laughs> so I followed him, and he followed me back nice yeah so he's got like he's following like 238 people and i'm, I'm one of them wow right so i designed a tiktok for him he yeah. used to run up the stairs in parliament <laughs> so i told him okay so grab like a file photo of you running up the stairs and then like you're walking up the stairs and then you're walking slowly with a cane and then you're sitting on one of those stair lifts right and then you get to the top and you're holding the the um, walker above <laughs> your head, Rocky's plan. <laughs> but his TikTok doesn't accept messages. Oh, okay. Because yeah. he would get, you Bob know, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. Personal goal to be hated as much as Trudeau. <laughs> Personal goal, right? You know, so far, so he's the same way. John Chan yeah. is hated by half the people, right? You know, liberal, liberal, conservative, right? Mm. Yeah, over here, um, Boris Johnson's having a pretty hard time of it right now with uh, 
getting busted for having parties when the nation was in lockdown and uh yeah so it's uh it's tenuous tenuous days whether he will be prime minister up until the election or not so it's uh looking rocky for for wow. both for both leaders actually for labor as well because uh th- there was a release on them as well that so is there just two parties or is there more yeah more? There's, only, there's only really two parties pretty much who's the conservative who's who's the who's who's left um, who's right um conservatives are right and labor's left and then you've got the lib dems which are sort of censor i don't know, I don't know where they are not really censor they they align right, they have different views but they're yeah 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 and they're, they're very they're very small there's also the green party but again very small too small to to do anything really um and then there's the scottish national party and, and stuff like that so they have a say but there's probably like one or two representatives or something okay. yeah it's uh, so can an individual member of parliament influence government in england yeah yeah they can yeah. Yeah, that's my thoughts too. Yeah, because right? they they all represent um, their constituency or the area that they look after, and then um, the people from that area give them their concerns, and then you know they go into parliament every week and you know try and fight for the rights for the people that they represent. That's what they're supposed to do. Yeah. So I want to write a law now before like like. Um, like I was entitled to get uh, 60% of the money back that I spent on the election. So I could have got 60% of $8,000 back Yeah, if, if I got 10% of the vote, right? I think I went over this before. But like, yeah. like I want to I stop that, right? Um, and my plan on doing it is to write the bill and then to make up an individual... Um, comedic um, saying for every one of my member of parliaments about their name, right? Like, like my member of parliament's name is Genius, but it's spelt like the I and E are backwards or something like that. Yeah. So I read Genius to Genius, right? I don't know which way, derogatory or not, doesn't matter, right? It's just a joke, right? Make Canada Trudeau list again with my hat because it, it's making fun of the American one, right? Whatever, right? Um, so send them a hat and I'd send them the bill and I'd also send them a bill for the hat. Right? <laughs> it's okay. They can just write it off and make the Canadian taxpayer pay for it. So, um, so what's next for you then? What, what are you going to do next? I'm going to finish reading, um, Section five, hours of service for a commercial carrier. Yeah. And um, I'm going to finish uh, all the study material for my commercial carrier's license for British Columbia. Then I'm going to get the BCID. And then I'm going to book the test. I'm going to write the test. Yeah. And then I'm going to uh, apply again because they, I timed out on the 5th of, of January. Apply again for my commercial carrier's license. And then I'm going to build a case for Vailmount Taxi operating a taxi service in, in Vailmount. And the board will look at it and they'll determine whether or not we should be, um, that we should have a license to operate there. Yeah. And then I was going to call the Chamber of Commerce in Vailmount. And see if she found out whether I can get a liquor license or not. I was just going to try and get her to help me out, right? Where, where and, for? Uh, for? For your house or for the taxi? or? Like... Yeah, I want to put a fridge in the back of the Land Rover. Okay. Yeah. I want to be able to sell 200 beers a day. Out of, out of the back of, you know, just go to the liquor yeah. store and buy the six packs when they're whatever they're worth, you know, $15 and sell them later on for, at night for, for 20 Yeah. Right? And then they're delivered. You don't have to drive to the liquor store. Um, you get a ride home. Now you can buy a six pack too, right? Uh, I get both like, like, like deal, like hook up with these guys with three ranges, 
mm-hmm. right? Because it's very popular beer there, but also like the general Budweiser brand too, right? Um, and probably sh- I should get a bank account with the, the bank that's there in that town. Um, I've been list writing this morning, so, you know. Okay. So you're getting ready for 2022, all new challenges. Well, I, I knew that I had to write some lists and it was, it's, it's been uh, like a thing for me. Right. And this morning I got them all done. Yeah. Or you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, I don't know. We get the rest of the TV polls peeled and, uh, put them up and then probably get some, a professional, like, a like, you know, mm-hmm. like somebody that has some sort of pre heritage and set TVs before to come and help me. Yeah. Of the TP. And then uh, we'll probably cook up some bannock, fry bread, right? And uh, um, what else we got going on? Uh, I, I I went on the uh, dating apps. Okay. And I found a girl that uh, she says she's 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 raising two terrorists. <laughs> one's six and one's eight. Yeah. So, um, like we'd already liked each other or whatever. Right. So I, I asked her if I could apply for the job of terrorist trainer. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like, I, I hope I get to, I hope I get to mold those two minds. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. I, uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's a great age to mold. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I look forward to getting them pocket knives and teaching them how to use an ax. And how to build a fire. These yeah. are skills I think young boys should know. And yeah, yeah, definitely. And I, th- I think all all young boys and men should know how to do that. Especially one that doesn't have a father that's consistent in their life, yeah. right? They should have these skills. Yeah. So I hope I get that opportunity. And um, I don't really want to deal with my high nephew, right? Mm. You know? um, right and uh, uh, well I hope I'm not late but I organized to have breakfast at 8 o'clock in, yeah what, what, time, what time is it there now we're on time with that so uh, I guess what's next is I'm going to go cook breakfast for okay. the troop that sounds good so um, yeah dude I think we did a long time uh, I don't yeah. know how long. So, can I send you a pumpkin seed in the yeah, mail? Go f- yeah, go Do for you- it. No, no, is it legal? Um, no, it might be okay. It might be all right. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, we. what's the difference between that and getting uh, a banana from Africa? You know, it's a pumpkin seed. What's it going to do? Um, but I can't take a banana with me to, to the States, can I? I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, but uh, yeah, we should we should courier some stuff back and forth. Okay. Uh, the furs would be really cool, but that's yeah. uh, another ticket. Like we need to get a license for that. But I'd love to send you some Belmont beer next time I'm out there. Yeah. Um. Let me know about that, and then I'll I'll send you the money. Um. You yeah. got PayPal. And then you should oh. send me something to put in the time capsule. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've I've got something you can have. Yeah. I think I think so. I've got something. And give it to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah it'll be quite. Just put it in an envelope. It'll be easy. Yeah. Right? Um. After this, send me your send me your mailing address, and I'll I'll sort it out. I'll I'll do it today while I remember. Oh yeah. Um. Sweet. And then other than that, I got this competitor. It's called the Nile Rhymes. It's got one yeah. million orders instead of one. I was gonna go pitch it at uh, New York Stock Exchange. They weren't going to go for it, but it would have been fun. Yeah. Next time. You can get them next New Year's Eve. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now I know how to go there. You know what I mean? A better yeah. plan, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Okay, dude. Well, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. We did uh, We did a very long time. I've still got... Marathon. I've still got one and a half. Co- co- hey? Do people watch this? Yeah. How many viewers you got? How many people uh, are still watching? You think, like, like oh, right now? What right like, now? Like, well, later on? Uh, let's have a look. Uh, I don't know. 
None. <laughs> I don't hey? know. Like, like you think anybody's going to make it this long? I don't know. It don't, uh, good work. Let me see. <laughs> let, let me check. What, what am I up to? Um, so far, um, as of today, uh, 16th of January, 2022, um, I have 134 subscribers. Um, our last video that, that we did, um, let me just find that. Our last video got 37 views. How many of those views you think made it to the end? Hmm. Watch That's, half of it. Like, how do you how do you determine that? Let, let, let me tell you. I've got analytics here for, for the, each individual video. Because I see that on my videos that I put on Facebook, right? But I'm, yeah. I, I get curious whether they watch the whole video or if they just tuned into it. Like, you know, like, like I've been reading a history book about Fort Saskatchewan. Okay, so it says here, um, yeah, 37 views. Um, this is around about the same as usual, sort of at that time. Um, let's have a look. Average view duration um, is <laughs> four minutes, 15 seconds. Um, average percentage of the video viewed. 2.4 percent um but there are there are some people who made it to the end um let's have a look like three percent of that 37 people made it to the very end how did you get that stat can i get that stat on my facebook video um no so it's on youtube um so yeah it, all the all the data is on youtube so let's have a look we got so i can get that on my youtube video then yeah yeah, if oh, yeah. you got yeah, if Is you got a better platform, should I start using that instead? Oh, I think so. Yeah, definitely. What's I think I'm. I made a a call with to Belmont TV. Um, I, I think I'm gonna like we talked about um some footage that I took a couple years ago. So I'm gonna try and get that on there. Let me show you this. Can you see this? Okay. Let me zoom in a little bit. So this is um. That's how many impressions. Total number of times the video thumbnail was shown to viewers since the video was published. Um, the impressions click-through rate, 37 views, 26 unique viewers. Um, it's about 72 days old. Let's have a look. What do you think Facebook pays? I don't know. Do they pay? I, I'm not sure. Well, they, they keep bugging me for ID, right? So, like, I, I ordered some new ID, so I'm gonna give it to him when I get back or when mm -hmm. I when I get my ID. So this is the traffic source information. So, three people came from WhatsApp, uh, one from Facebook, one from LinkedIn, one from Reddit, one from Twitter, and then this tells you where they where they were. There's not enough information to say where they were. And then you got viewer age. Yeah, still, there's not enough information because the people probably weren't logged in. Right. So we'll have to put advertisements in between the slow TVs sections to keep them yeah. interested. So yeah. we'll do like, you know, the 38 minute of the, the ice road. And then we'll squeeze in a couple uh, TikToks with cops in them. And then we'll go back to like <laughs> Yeah, do, the it, do it like a do it like a proper advertisement. Yeah, yeah so we'll do he, 20, 22 minutes of uh of 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 like open road and then like <laughs> you know like eight minutes of um TikTok videos. Advertising given given a uh, shout out to Renfrew. Shout out <laughs> Shout out to China. China. Or, or, uh, or I went by um, owl rafting, right? So I made a little TikTok there. Yeah. If you're ever traveling up the Ottawa Valley, think about checking out Ottawa or uh, owl rafting. You'll have a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll squeeze that in. Then we'll put a little link. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Because I'm all about advertising for people who don't even know that I'm advertising for them. <laughs> yeah. like, uh, like that town with the butter tarts. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love to do that as well. Um, I, yeah. I always I always put links on um, 
on my webpage, you know, for people just to try and help them. You know, if, if I know them, if I know they're a good business, you just put the really? link in and see if I can get them some clicks or something. So what's the best length of time to, to, to put this all together? Like an hour and a half? Oh, this. I just um, want to call it travels, right? And then I want to keep it going, right? Like I want to yeah. keep traveling. Yeah. Um, what? So make it like a travel series. Um, you know, well, every... Really, yeah. Like, like, like this episode now, um, if when I'm editing this, like if it could take like a full day to, you know, put the front on it, edit it, sync everything up and, and um, do any cuts that are needed. Um, so yeah, it could, take, it could take a full day, hour and a half. Seems. So you work out a financial uh, partnership right now? Um, yeah, you can do. <laughs> okay, what number are you thinking of? I don't know. I was thinking of seven. Seven? Seven yeah, but, what? But five is my favorite number. Seven what? I don't know. Seven hundred? Seven thousand? Like, like the uh like the um the clothing, like the little hippie store that used to fix my clothes. Yeah. That will that'll be 14 clams, she said. Right? <laughs> Did you give her 14 clams? No, but like like when I wrote the Constitution for Pirate Island, yeah. which is loosely based on the Pirates Code, yeah, um, I thought of having like, a, like, like try and design a online bartering um, group app, right, where um, I can value my electrical work at you know, four clams per afternoon, right? And I could use <laughs> my clams to buy like a a, um, a chocolate bar or, or a haircut or, you know, <laughs> We like already that. have that. It's called money. <laughs> and then, and then like, we could value the clams at one gram of gold. Okay. Right? Because, you know, like, then we're taking our money back to something real. Back to a gold right? standard. Yeah which you would you would determine how many clams your service is worth yeah right and all i really need is somebody to write the app for that okay right and then when you sign up and and become a member of whatever it is pirate island yeah you get one clam or one gram of gold right and then i was going to get the safe from the um the donair shop and i was going to take it out to the islands so that we could actually hold currency somewhere but, on, on pirate island yeah but but the um the the landlord took the uh yeah, safe yeah. and the my my friend sold the store so. next time <laughs> it's not over yet right <laughs> i think I, I still i still want to make it happen right like yeah. it, like because people people want that too right like, like they want to trade a haircut for, uh, whatever for, for a fucking plumbing fix or whatever. Right. Yeah. 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 And, and not have to do money and, and like, right. So, hmm. um, I look forward to multiple streams of income and many business plans to be written. I'm really happy. I took that six month course on, on, uh, starting your own business, right? I learned how to write a business plan. The business never took flight, but, but like, you know, I'm on my third business plan now. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You just so, got to keep going because like, um, you know, you, you'll get there eventually. You, you throw well, Yeah. Plan. So yeah. I'll write that business plan for that homeless shelter in Prince George. Right. Yeah. And, and the, you know what I mean? The, the, the politicians and the bankers will look at it. And, and the hope is that I can get, multiple investors with $10,000 and be profitable, mm. right? We're not running a charity. We're providing a service that's needed, right? And like, mm. right? So that's, that's my thoughts. That's okay. nice. Beautiful, man. So um, yeah, we'll, um, we'll call it a day because we're going for, for a long time. Um, but 
thank you very much for your time as always and uh, have you got any last words for uh, the people out there who yeah. may have made it to the end well keep your stick on the ice we're all in this together keep your stick on the ice we're all in this together yeah nice <laughs> beautiful thanks buddy see you later Thank you.